All right, Derek Jimenez, right? Yep. Yeah, thank you for, for coming through. I really appreciate the support. And um, you came out here from just passing Pomona, you said? Pomona, Pomona, California. Nice. Is awesome. that where you're born and raised? <clears throat> born and raised in West Covina, and uh, I call Pomona home now. Okay. So, right on. so, which is like a city over from West Covina. Right on. And um, so, California native. Are you Mexican as well? My, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, ethnic background is Mexican. My parents are both born in Mexico. Okay. I was born here in I was born in Hollywood, California. Hollywood. So a true Hollywood Marine. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. And um, you were well, born like 1982. Okay. I was born 90. Okay. Yeah. So I'm 33. I just turned 33. Um, your boy, is that your only kid? That I know of, yes. He's a 14 year old, yeah. Just turned 14. Yeah. Uh, married and everything, or? Uh, single, never married. Oh, okay. So, but him and his wife, uh, his wife, uh, his mom and I live together, which is, you know, trying to do right by him. And yeah. So she's my domestic partner. Right on. The battle axe, I call her. Yeah, right. Uh, so. they're junior or a different name? Uh, Leonidas. Leonidas? Oh, yeah. sick ass name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's a, he's a Leo. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, well, uh, Leonidas means uh, lion-like. So and, yeah. And his zodiac sign is Leo. Okay. Did you name him um, after Leonidas? Um, I did. So yeah. uh, on the commandant's reading list at the time was Gates of Fire. Yeah. So when I read uh, Stephen Pressfield's Gates of Fire, I read that book, and Leonidas obviously the king of Sparta. I was okay. like, oh, you know, I like that name a lot. Yeah. And then it just like went like it was all, went, like <laughs> to me it all aligned like you know. The zodiac signs of Leo. Yeah. The United means lion like. So, and then he was, you know, the, day, the, the day came. Mm. And uh, that's what I picked. Yeah. Would you um, ever want him to join the Marine Corps? <clears throat> I wouldn't mind. Like, so, um, we, so he goes to like an all boys private school. Like, he's all, he's, okay. he's gone to all since, sure. since, since TK. He's gone to like Catholic private school. Like, I always try to do the best we could. The school he goes to is like the best uh, mm -hmm. all boys school around. It's Hell like yeah. it's, it's not the best school ever, yeah. But it's it's the best school I can afford, yeah. So and it's luckily for us, it's close to us. Mm -hmm. Um. So and they're the Damian Spartans. To top it off. Oh no way. Yeah. So, oh, that's like meant to be right there. That's how I see it. Yeah. He's not too happy about it because it's all boys school, yeah. but no. Um. It's it's a college prep, so it's like I try mm. to try to um, tell him like. This is a school designed to get you to college. Yeah. No, so for his, sure. uh, we just got his report card. He got a three five. Mm. Uh, gets him. Hell uh, like yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he got a, he got like two B. He got a B in math. Uh, but to your question, like I wouldn't mind if he went to college, and went the ROTC route, mm -hmm. and then became like an officer. officer. Yeah. Um, but to enlist, like no, I, I wouldn't yeah. want him to enlist. Yeah. Uh, like he's young. He's fourteen. He's a freshman, but. Uh, you know, maybe I don't know if something happened, and he, he was like a troubled youth. But like right now, the path he's on, like yeah, to be, like to be blunt, I expect better. Like I, he's gonna go to college, he's gonna you know mm -hmm. do well, and if if you know he gets accepted to like a a good ROTC, which there's a lot of ROTC programs around, yeah. I, I'd be for it. Yeah. So only like only in that scenario, like I would I wouldn't mind. For sure. Yeah, my son. Um, so we just moved on to Camp Pendleton. Oh, nice. Yeah. So so we moved in. I moved into this shop with my business partner daniel october 1st and that same day my wife just checked like the base housing website so there's like a lot of availability i don't know why but um so to the point where they're letting more dod employees and veterans come onto base and like oh, nice. prices went down by like almost a thousand dollars so my wife she works for the dod and we're both veterans so we applied right away and then we got it to a, a four bedroom for like twenty five hundred, and then we don't have to pay utilities or anything. So we're like, fuck yeah! So we got approved for that like that same month. And then now that we live on Camp Pendleton, you know, we always see the Marines and coming out to base. They're always armed. We see LAVs rolling down the street all the time. Then my son's yeah. like, this is so fucking cool. He's like, I want to be a Marine. I was like, oh god damn it, you know. And the same thing, like, I'd rather just have you go to college or like join the Air Force or something. Yeah, I, a lot has to do with your upbringing. Like, he doesn't watch more movies. He doesn't like that stuff. Like, when yeah. I was his age, I, you know, all the product of the 80s, all the TV shows I watched, you know, yeah. they're all, even the cartoons, Transformers, yeah. G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, I was, it was destined for me to, like, do yeah. the military. Uh, little did I know, you know, like, I was, because of what I was, it was, it was programming. Yeah. 
Um, mm. But I don't mind. Like, yeah. this, that's my character. Yeah. Um, so I'm totally cool with it. Like, I, I felt like I was destined for that. Yeah. But he's not like that. Like, he doesn't. Yeah. Like, hey, like, watch Saving Private Ryan. Like, it's a really good movie. Mm. No. Let's watch Black Hawk Down. No. Like, mm. any, anything, you know? Yeah. So it, it's just, they're, they're different. Yeah. So I couldn't did, see him being, maybe, you know, you know, down the road. Yeah. Did, did you grow up, like, was it like a rough neighborhood? Was it like the hood growing up? <laughs> Uh, I grew up in, uh, so originally from Belinda, which is like another city over from West Covina. And it was uh, predominantly like, I, it was like one of the first, I would say like cities like Mexicans started to move out of like East LA. Yeah. So it was like up and coming. So it was, it was pretty decent. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't a rough neighborhood. And then little by little, it started getting worse, worse with the gangs. Mm. And then my parents started to do better uh, financially. So like, hey, let's move. So okay. they moved to West Covina. A lot better, a lot better neighborhood. Um, but still like, you know, you had... Just like today, you got the fake cholos, the fake gangbangers. Mm -hmm, like, yeah. you know, but, you know, uh, everyone's rea reality is their perception. Like, some people think they're, like, hardcore gangbangers. Like, dude, mm -hmm. like, how you gangbang? Like, there's no, there's no yeah. guy here. Like, yeah. But still. So, I find it kind of funny. He got banged on at a football game. Yeah? Uh, that, Recently? What, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so a uh, couple couple weeks ago, he got a flex on. They try to, no, they, they try to press him. Yeah. So he said all the white kids, oh, sorry, all the, all, all the, yeah, the, his, his, his uh, fellow students, uh, they got, they got nervous and he was just like, oh, I don't bang and all this other stuff. Yeah. They left him alone. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Like he's. It was like a, like a high school football game. High school football game. Okay. He, like he's a combination of like smarts, a little bit of hood, but like mm -hmm. hasn't backed it up. Like he hasn't got been in a fight yet. So. Uh, just different, you know, but different upbringing. Yeah. Because as parents, you know, we just try to do better for them and try try to keep them out of that. But yeah. like, it's it's inevitable. Like, you might be in a situation where you have to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why I told him the importance of like, you gotta learn something. You gotta learn a discipline because it might happen. Yeah. You know, especially with you can't even, like today with you know modern times with all the high school shootings and stuff. Like, it could happen. Like, it's it's reality. Yeah. And you might have to be able to defend yourself. So yeah. It, to me, it's important that he knows something. Freaking uh, yesterday, uh, we're playing like salsa in here, and we're playing this dude named Frankie Ruiz, mm -hmm. and he's from my hometown, Patterson, New Jersey. And I told Daniel, he was like, "Yeah," I'm like, "Yeah, he's from my hometown, Patterson, and all that." And I'm like, "Patterson, like, I started comparing it to like Santa Ana, but it's just like it's way ghettoer. It looks fucking bad." So I put Patterson up here, like somebody like driving through Patterson, just recording. And um and it's the it was so funny because the video started like in the hood that I grew up in, and then I'm like, oh, this is where my friend got shot. This is like where I went to school. I know somebody got stabbed over here. Me and my brother got jumped right over here, and all this shit. It's like freaking, mm. you know, like you know, just growing up in rough neighborhoods. You gotta just you gotta just learn how to defend yourself, or you know. <clears throat> yeah, he he's growing up in like our block is okay, like. Our house is nice. Yeah, like we're in the hood, but he's two block. We're two blocks away from Holt. Holt is like Hooker Avenue. Mm. Of of uh, so you got Figaro and like in LA. So <laughs> come to the, to I heard about the east side. <laughs> yeah. So so Holt is like bad. Like okay. So it was funny. When, well, it wasn't funny, but when he was a kid, like they would take him. His school used to be on Holt. Mm. His little Catholic school. So he'd yeah. go to Catholic school and he would see like streetwalkers and yeah. know, high hills and. Uh -huh. Yeah. Under, like an inappropriate attire. Yeah. I was like, damn, you know. But that's the reality, you know. Yeah. Well, his reality. Yeah. So. And um, so you say you you train jujitsu. Do do you does he train too? He he. he so <laughs> we try to get him. So he he has trained jujitsu. Uh, he fell into more. Uh, so we do more boxing now. So I so okay. so I like my background. Is I wrestled. Uh, well, as a kid, I did I did uh, I started off with hapkido. And then what I is went, that? Hapkido is a Korean. It's like the so uh, Korea has Hapkido and Taekwondo. Okay. Hapkido is it similar. Was, it's very similar, but Hapkido okay. was kind of like the, the the rich martial art. Okay. So I started off because where I live, there was actually a Hapkido school. So I went to I did Hapkido first. I got to Red Belt, which is one below Black. Then when we moved to West Covina, uh, we were I was too far to go back to that school. So my dad found a Taekwondo school. And they let me come over as a red belt, so one below black. So I came in as okay. a red belt, probably trained for like a year, and then I got my black belt. Probably mm. by the time I was in like taekwondo. 12, in taekwondo, mm. by the time I was twelve. So I was like the martial arts background. I was like kicking, yeah, 
Uh, more so kicking, but the flexibility, like you know, that that, that always translates to yeah. Uh, so I, I can kick really high, like still okay. can. Yeah, so I still no way. So yeah, so it helped out when I uh, transitioned to Muay Thai. So I, so now I love Sick. Muay Thai. Hell yeah! But are, are you still doing Muay Thai? Yeah. I'm oh, dude, Muay I just Thai. went to an event in San Diego last week with my son. Nice. Because his um his coach um was like the main event, and he was fighting for a belt. He ended up losing, but it went all five rounds. Okay. And then I remember the like the fight of the night. It was this smaller black dude versus like this tall white guy. Smaller black dude, he still lost, but it went all five rounds. And you could tell he had like a background in taekwondo, because because his fucking leg kicks it were so fucking high and just like so fast, like yeah, I guess like roundhouse, like backwards roundhouse, going for the head and doing all these crazy combinations. But um, nice. that's just fucking insane, dude. Yeah, so, so awesome. Yeah, so. Super grateful for my dad for putting me uh, in martial arts. Yeah. Did you, did you, um, you ever had any matches or anything like amateur or anything like that? No, technically no. No? Never, not once competed. Yeah. Uh, in like a sanctioned match. Right on. Hopefully we get there. Like I'm, I'm really hoping, that, you know, as, as, as I'm getting older, like kind of realizing like, hey man, like it's, uh, yeah. it's now or never. So, yeah. So hopefully. Do you want to? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I love competing. Yeah. Competing to me is like uh, it's my therapy, like that. For sure, I love it. Like, yeah. That. So it makes me feel alive. Like, uh, so that's what I really enjoy competing in anything. In anything, I don't care okay. if it's checkers, yeah, like, or dominoes. <laughs> like, I hate losing. I cannot lose. Like, I, for sure. So that's I, that's I try like to try my yeah. Best. That's like the marine too. Like freaking, I hate fucking losing as well. Yeah. Fucking, I, I get fucking like annoyed. Like, oh. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right on. So um. So you went to high school in West Covina? I went to West Covina High School about three, three, four blocks from my parents' house. Okay. What, what years did you go to high so school? I went to, I was a freshman in 96. Okay. I was class of 2000. I did not graduate with my class. Okay. I went to continuation and uh, it took me like another year and a half before I finally graduated. Yeah. Did you do ROTC in high school too or no? I did not. Okay. Nothing like that. So, um... So what? When in high school did you want to like enlist in the Marine Corps? I don't think I. I always think, or I think it was like in the back of my mind. Yeah. But I never thought of it like I was. <clears throat> I always had a lot of facial hair. Yeah. As a, uh, as a like as a freshman, I had a, I had a straight goatee, so I could always buy alcohol. So I was always I was always drinking. I was always partying. <laughs> uh, I don't think until like I didn't graduate with my class that it, like reality finally hit. Like, yeah. dude, like. You're going nowhere. Yeah. Um, and then, 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 then it was like, what can I, what can you honestly do? Yeah. You're not going to go to junior college. Like, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're only lying to yourself. And then I started thinking like, well, I always wanted to join the military. Like I've always yeah, seen myself for sure. doing that. And then that's when I was like, so luckily I took the ASVAB as a, I, I took it as a senior. Do you remember your score? I do remember my score. So I got a 33. But I don't like, so I was thinking, so it was uh, like went to the cafeteria with everybody uh, and, and I just don't think I got, like, I don't think I passed. Yeah. Like, I think the recruiter hooked me up. Yeah. I just got out of class and I remember just scribbling, like just, just, you know, filling in like bubbles. Okay. Cause I, I just, I, I didn't take it serious. Yeah. I don't think it was going to be important. So somehow I got a 33. Yeah. Somehow I passed. And then, um, well back then, what was the, um, the bare minimum to pass. I believe it's 33. 33? Yeah. Okay. Might be 31, 33, but yeah. I, I know I, I barely passed. Yeah. I think when I was, when I enlisted, I think it was like 29 or something. Oh. Yeah. So, um, all right. So you passed and then, um, so what, what year is this and how old were you? So I would have been 16, 17 and it would have been 1999. Okay. It's like I was class of 2000. That's when I took the ASVAB. Okay. But I didn't graduate to like two like mid-year 2001 so that you were like a like a junior no i took it senior year i, okay, I didn't okay. so i didn't graduate oh, so okay, I, okay. I had to go to continuation all right, all right. so i went to continuation for like a year and a half all right um i call it coronado tech right on um yeah so sucked i was a super senior yeah so i was there for a whole year and then i didn't graduate again yeah so it was like even worse so now i gotta go back 
Um, so my little sister was two years younger than me. Yeah. So now her and I are like in the same class. <laughs> so, so there I'm at Cornell. So, so my super my my super senior year, I went to school. So I actually went to the school. Yeah. And then after that, I was so embarrassed, like I'm not showing my face again. Mm. So then it was like more like homeschooled. Okay. So I just had to do a couple packets. It actually wasn't much to, to get me to graduate. Yeah. And then I finally graduated. So you're you must have been like 19. I was still young, so I was still like 18 and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right. So luckily, and then I saw, so I walked with the class of 2002. So now I'm probably about 19. And you started, you went to school in 96? 96, I was a freshman. I would have graduated with the class of 2000 at 17. And then I walked with the class of 2002. And oh. then I went to boot camp uh, September uh, 2009. Okay. I'm sorry, 2009. Uh, 09, 09, 2002. So September 9, 2002. But so you took the ASVAB in '99. Yeah, my senior year. And then you were already enlisted already because you already signed a contract or no? No, no, okay. I didn't. Uh... So then, like, so when 9/11 happened, were you still like, yeah, I'm still still joining? I was a pulley so when when that happened, but I was working so. So now, <clears throat> so. So since I didn't graduate, but I was getting older, I got a job at UPS. So I was working like, uh, I was doing unload at UPS. So I probably started working like at 04. We were off by like 08. But when the first plane hit, we were unloading. And mm. um, so my sorter, so I'm unloading, I'm in the trailer, I'm unloading packages. And the sorter's like, hey, you know, a plane just crashed into the, to the tower. And like I hit the stop button. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, a plane just hit, you know, the Twin Towers. And then so we go back to work. So keep unloading uh, packages, and then they stop. Like, all work stop, and they clear us out. Like, hey, you know, uh, something's going on. Go home. So we rushed home, and I turned on, like, CNN, and it was like, and I saw the second plane hit the tower. Um, so, but I had already enlisted. Mm. I had already enlisted, but I had trouble. So because of my weight, I didn't ship out. Like, I, dude, I, so I. I you were overweight? Yeah. Okay. So I go down to MIPS, and they weigh me. Oh, you do your, you know, I did my little pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're good. Then you, then you get weighed, and they're, like, kind of borderline. They're like, ah, oh, no, nah, you're not shipping out today. Come back in a month. So then my recruiter's, you know, pretty pissed. So then I got to come back, like, a month later. And I, again, I didn't. Yeah. I, 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 was, uh, I was over. So now you got you got to come back in three months. Mm. So that's strike two. So when I came back the third time, like, if you don't make weight, you're out. I mean, you can re-enlist, but yeah. your contract's void. You're not going to ship out. And luckily, my third time, I shipped out. So and that brings us to, like, yeah, September. Yeah. yeah I remember, so I'm from Jersey, right? So, um, like, September 11, I was in sixth grade. And, um, you know, everything happened or whatever. And, you know, all the kids in my school got picked up early and all that. Yeah. But the next day, September 12, so, like, nobody went to school. Nobody went to work. So I was at home. Uh, me, my brother, my dad, my mom, and my brother, my father took me and my brother to Jersey City. It's a city right across from the Twin Towers, like directly across. Just he wanted to, he was like, let's try to go into New York City, like just start nosy Hispanic, you know. So we drove all the way out there, and then we pulled up to like this park where there's a basketball court. And there was a shit ton of people just lined up like on this gate right here. And then you see, like, the cloud of smoke. You see the whole fucking shit. You see all the debris in the air and all the fucking smoke going into, like, outer space. Like, fucking insane. And um, we're there for, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 30 minutes or an hour or something. And then we got back in the car, and we drove towards, like, the Holland Tunnel. That There's, like, an intersection right before the Holland Tunnel. And then that shit, which is, which is a bunch of cops and firefighters. Fucking dudes just fucking, you could tell they had, like, no sleep or no nothing. Just trying to control traffic and evacuate the city and everything. I remember a cop, like, yelling at my father. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out of here. Just, like, and um, I remember, like, seeing, like, the look on his face. This dude, I remember he had, a, like, a mustache. And he just looks fucking so stressed out, you know? Because you know, he probably lost, like, you know, yeah. like, fucking 200 friends the day before, you know? Probably been out for 24 hours. But um, that's like my memory of like 9-11. And then um, like the next day or two days after the fucking every, you know, every car and every house had an American flag all over the right. fucking place and shit. And every time like a fire truck would like pass by, everybody would just honk the horns yeah. and shit. And 
Yeah, that's like my little. That's what I remember of like nine eleven. I feel like that's always been like the biggest reason. Like one of the reasons why I joined and became so patriotic is because like that little such a core memory in my childhood. You know, seeing all that shit go down and seeing everybody like united. Yeah. Everybody, that's like fucking like when I think of like United States or whatever, like I fucking think of that when everybody was just together and everybody was there for each other. You know, so nowadays true. we're so fucking divided. We dude. are divided, yeah. Absolutely right. Though. I remember that. Like, so many trucks had flags. Like yeah. everyone was honking. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was. It was a good time to be in America. Well, yeah. Considering the situation, but yeah, yeah. it was like you felt united. Like yeah. you said. And then a cool. couple days later, watching George Bush go on the news, like I'm declaring war on whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, but so, nine eleven happens. Then you graduated high school. So you went to boot camp, well, like summer of two thousand two, September 9th, two thousand two, on the yellow Okay, Fox. nice, right here in San Diego. MCRD San Diego, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, do you have any like boot camp stories, or do you, do you remember what platoon or what company you were? Thirty one twenty two. Yeah. What company? Psycho Ico. Psycho Ico. Nice. India company. Nice. Um. So you, you got any like funny boot camp stories? Uh yeah. I remember the one that always makes me laugh is uh was like uh we're all online on the emergency head call. <laughs> you know, this kid Cox is like, I gotta take it he's like, you know, you know, he he's right there just his, you just see his legs shaking, right? Yeah. He's like, This recruit request to make an emergency head call. I'm like, oh really? <laughs> emergency head call. And then um I don't know. I think I think something stand by or whatever, and he just shaking more, shaking more, shaking more. Right, and I'm just over there laughing. Everyone's, you know, yeah. you're more disciplined now. You're, uh -huh. you're not laughing out loud, but just yeah. like, trying to hold it in. And we were in uh, desert camis, and the next thing you know, he just he stopped shaking, and you just see like the darkness oh. in his right leg, all the way, and then you just see the drone instructors like Cox, and then like they you know got the the <clears throat> got the mop buckets out. Swap the deck. <laughs> that one, there was this kid, uh, uh, Matlock. Remember, the, he had to pull the charging handle to the rear, and he was right there screaming, Hi, sir! Hi, sir! And they're like, see, the drone truck, like, louder! Hi, sir! Hi, sir! Hi, sir! And he just passed out, bloop! <laughs> and everyone the platoon's like, <laughs> Yeah. And just laughing. Uh, those were like the two funny ones. Freaking um Damn. this this morning, bro. I fucking my son, my my youngest one, my five year old. For some reason, like he doesn't go to the bathroom that's like right next to his room. He runs into my room to use the bathroom, right? And then he just like, barges into the room at like five in the morning, and he turns on the lights. And I look, and then he's just like trying to like pull down his pants to like pee, oh. and then he just like stops moving, and I just see the freaking his. His pant leg get all dark and shit. I'm like, oh, come on, bro. It's fucking 5 a.m. right now. Had to change up and everything. Um, but yeah. Um, so you graduated. You must have graduated, what, like, December or something? Uh, Miss Thanksgiving, yeah. So graduated early December. Uh, and then went on uh, recruiter's assistance. Okay. So... Meritoriously promoted in boot camp, so I got my PFC and got my little stripe. I was all proud. Yeah. And then, yep, went to uh, recruiter's assistance in El Monte, California, which is, you know. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, like, that's like next door to it, right? To West Covina? Pretty, yeah, uh, yeah. Bond Park, El Monte, uh, going west right on. towards L.A. Um, uh, got a DUI on RA. Yeah? Yeah. No, wait, did you guys repeat? <clears throat> I, dude, the, the war saved me. Mm. So again, it was uh, it was the day after Christmas, hanging out with my family, and it was late. We we're hanging out, and I was hungry. Yeah. So went to go do a Jack in the Box run. Yeah. Are you underage? Oh uh, yeah. So okay. nineteen. Go to Jack in the Box, order a bunch of food, pull up, and it was like twenty four bucks. I remember. And I pulled out, and I only had twenty bucks. Mm. And then I was like thinking about it. I had the Pacific Marine Credit Union card. Okay. It's not yeah. a debit card yet. Yeah. Right? So I pull out my Pacific Marine. They're like, oh, you know, we don't take this. And I was like, oh, I got a good idea. I'm going to go to the bank and pull out some money and come back. Instead of being like 
just take out like four bucks worth of food and, mm. you know or whatever you know <laughs> just charge me for or let me buy twenty dollars worth of food yeah i was like no i'm gonna go to the bank so i pull out make a hard left and then oh there's a bank hit a u-turn hit and then LASD's right there boom lights me up bam pull into the bank uh i'll under so i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna win that one uh they were kind enough to not tow the car so get arrested go in was there for a couple hours they released me oh but th where i messed up was that um they asked me like uh who's your chain of command you know who do, who do we reach out to were you in uniform no i wasn't in uniform uh it was like almost midnight um you told them that you were in the marine corps or? i told them I was in the marine corps yeah oh, oh. Just, just seemed like a good idea yeah so then but where i messed up was i told them that i was they're like so what, what unit do you belong to and i was like well i kind of don't belong to a unit like i'm going to soi yeah a school of infantry so they call school of infantry mm, no way so but like i didn't really know like i kind of didn't expect that so i get released then i go to my recruiter and i and i, and I tell him he's like you dummy you should have said that you were you belong to me i would have you know try to cover for you you know yeah. whatever you know so they call school of infantry um so ra is over and i go check in soi so then i go check in on soi check in cool you know go to the squad bay so i'm in the squad bay hanging out with the boys you know smoking and joking yeah. laughing. <laughs> and all i hear is like where the fuck you at jimenez <laughs> i pop up like here sir and it was like it was a like, corporal i'm a fucking corporal yeah. You, know, you know, you just straight out of boot camp. So you yeah. know, everyone's sir still. So I run in there. He's like, follow me. We're going like the duty hut. And it was like a staff sergeant. He's like, you got a fucking DUI on a recruiter's assistance? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Motherfucker, I'm a staff sergeant. I'm like, you know, still kind of. Yeah, all recruit. Yeah, 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 so I'm still in that mode, that recruit mode. I told him yes. So he's like. First of all, our dip's gone, right? We're about to invade Iraq. So yeah. there's really nobody there. Okay. So he's like, well, um, we'll let you train and we'll go from there. So then SOI happens and I'm there at SOI. And uh, they let me train. Yeah. So they let me train. That was cool. But it would it would catch up to me, like, eventually. Yeah. So, but thankfully, because of the war, I got yeah. to, you know, do marine stuff and it looked good on me and they're like well you, you know you're okay. here yeah all right so they kind of like let it slide so from soi i graduated soi and then first mark is gone the entire division is gone so we check mm. in so after we graduate soi we go to camp margarita okay which is 33 right, area um yeah so it's yeah. right outside the airfield yeah that, that was a staging area for all the people that were going to go. So there was everyone that gra was graduating, mm -hmm. was was mobilizing there, and they were okay. going to pump out to Kuwait to meet up with their units because all our units were gone. Oh, so meet up with them over there. Yeah, in country because oh, okay. they were mm -hmm. about to invade. Yeah. So and at uh, at Camp Margarita, they I go see a warrant officer. But so this is two thousand three. Two thousand three. This is uh yeah like. Late January, no, yeah, early January. Okay, all right. Uh, before March, had to be before March. So get to Camp Margarita. We're there for two weeks. Before then, I go see the warrant officer, and I'm like, you know, you know, rank structure from boot camp, but yeah. you haven't seen it yet, so uh -huh, you're kind of yeah. like, you're confused. Uh, can we let this kid in? Yeah, I got. Can you rush real quick? Yeah, yeah, good. Cool. So we were Camp yeah. Margarita. Camp Margarita. I gotta go see the warrant officer. So uh, I check in, <clears throat> and he same thing. He's like, "You got a DUI on recruiter's assistance, right?" Because technically, like my recruiter is like, "Dude, they're gonna kick you out." Like that's the worst case scenario. Like, that, well, that's most likely what happens. So I got to do SOI. So that was like one, one plus. So then, yeah. So get to the to see the warrant officer. This guy's in charge of Camp Margarita. Yeah. There is no like officers. It's only warrant officers. Okay. So he looks at me, he looks, you know, he's looking, he's like, he doesn't know what to do. Because what do you want? Like, he's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, uh, you know, I don't understand the question, sir. And I was like, uh, you know, I want to, you know, I want, I want to stay in the Marines. And he goes, well, damn it. He goes, it'd be like uh, a waste of the Marine Corps time, your time and my time. He goes, you're going to go to Iraq. And I was like, yeah. yes, sir. So then I ship out, 
ship out to uh, Kuwait to go stage. What well, what's like um this uh, your state of mind or like the the other boot PFCs and all that? Knowing that they just joined and they're about to ship off, is are they like scared? Are they excited? How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you feeling anxious? Or are you like, yeah, let's fucking go get some. All the above, like yeah, just you know, the unknown. Yeah. But it's like, it's great. Boot camp, SOI. Two weeks later, you're you're in Kuwait. Yeah. Staging to invade a country, like, dude, this is you know. Back to back. Just yeah, like, it's just it's not normal. It's yeah. like everything's mm-hmm. happening so fast. And to be the first ones. Yeah. So yeah. So now get to Kuwait. First Mark Div is already in like invading. Oh, they already pushed out. Yeah. So they're like, I guess in transit, this stuff is going down. So we're staging, and then so the log train, like, well, first Mark Div's already mm-hmm. penetrated Iraq. They already hit the LOD, the line of departure. So they they crossed in, and now they're trying to figure out how to get us to our units. Okay. So, but, so you don't know what unit you're checking into. No, yeah. So I knew from SOI I was going to three five. Okay, uh, in the company. Uh, just three five, yeah. Okay. So they get us. So we, 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 we push out from Kuwait. And I'm telling you, as far as north as I can see, coalition forces. Yeah. As far south as I can see, just vehicles. Just yeah. coalition forces. Mm. Going to go. Just like a massive yeah. convoy. And we know they're in contact, but they're just so far ahead of us that, that it you... doesn't affect us. Yeah. Wow. So... Can you see like rounds? No. Okay. Nothing. But you know they're getting. Yeah, they know. Yeah, they're they're just so far ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, we finally got to them. So you guys had to like catch up to them. Yeah, we finally catch up to them, hmm. and then they had, they had already been in contact. So like you know this is they already, they had already fought a uniform force. So like three five had, had already had the killing fields. They already had a couple. Mm. They already they already had been in contact. This is crazy because like. Carlos told me all this yeah. about the killing fields and getting content, and this is pretty dope that like your story is kind of meeting up with his. Yeah, That's so we're I'm... in the rear catching up. So now we catch up with three five, and then you know, so we go to our respective companies, and they break us up into our respective platoons, mm-hmm. and then and then to to our squads. Wow. So now you're this little. <laughs> I mean, I, I I was just from RA. Yeah. From crew assistance. Staging two more weeks in Camp Margarita, knowing I'm going to go to Iraq. I was just eating, having yeah. a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so I check. So I get to my 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 uh, platoon, and they're dug in, and they're already like, you can just see in their face, dude. Like they've already been in contact. Like yeah. they want no part of me. They don't like me already. Just yeah. showed up, like mm-hmm. just just yeah. the booty, just the boot, you know. Yeah. So I brought two cartons of cigarettes with me to kind of like break the ice. Okay. No, that's that's super so smart. Yeah. I get there and like. Like vultures, dude. I'm like, hey, you know, I brought some smokes and boom, boom, boom. Like they just grab them from me. Yeah. And like no one talks to me, but you know, they enjoyed it. Like it was the gesture. Yeah, I guess, no, you know? like, I, for sure. I put the thought into it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And uh, so when we dug in, we dug in there. I'm there, 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 there I am. And no one, no one likes me. Carlos is like my biggest enemy. Are you in the same platoon as Carlos? Same platoon as Carlos. Same squad? And... Uh, not same squad. Okay. So not my biggest enemy, but he's like not my. He's not a fan of me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm new. Yeah, just a new guy who just hasn't been in contact yet. Yeah, haven't uh, you know suffered what they suffered, been through what they've been through. Yeah. so I'm different. Yeah, so that's what went on. We pushed uh, all the way up north to, to Baghdad to Samara, then we came back down to Diwania, and that's where we went firm. Uh, we took the town of Diwania. Quick question: um, So, by the time you got to your platoon and everything, were there any KIA's? Yeah, Corporal Silva. Corporal Silva. That's crazy. Um, his cousin hit me up like a month ago because he saw Carlos's interview. And he was, I don't know what he said, but he was like, yeah, I had a, a cousin out there that was killed in the killing fields. Yeah. His Silva. name was Silva, Corporal Silva. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, Carlos just told me about this dude. Yeah, so I never met him. Um, but when I got there, it had just happened. Yeah. And, uh, and the major, I think the XL had got run over by a track. Mm. So we were rolling with a with a major two who's gonna be his, his replacement. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, so we, And that major passed away? The the original XO he got ran over by a track. Okay. And then the guy that was traveling with us from Camp Margarita. Yeah. Or in Kuwait stayed with us. He he pushed with us. Okay. And he was gonna be the new uh XO. Okay. For three five. So you guys pushed through 
tell me all the cities again that you guys pushed through. We went all the way to, to Baghdad, then to Samara, and then in Samara we went firm for a little bit. And I remember Gunny making us get haircuts. Firm and, as in like you guys stayed there for a little bit? Yeah, we took a pause. We dug in. Like there was like a trench line already there. So we that thankfully that was there. So that kind of like made a, that little little pause yeah. easier. And the next thing you know, it was Gunny was like, hey, you guys are getting haircuts. <laughs> and then he pulled out a generator. He was like, hey, who can cut hair? Yeah. And then I was like, I cut hair. <laughs> so I go, I go back to the, to, there was a track. And it was cool because I didn't have to, I didn't have to hold security. Yeah. So I was cutting hair. And uh, cutting white, white people's hair, like, it's easier to fade, right? Yeah, it's no, kinda, for sure. Yeah. So I kind of warmed it's up. Like, it's light. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. So then, so I, like I faded a couple people up, and they were like, "Man, you cut hair pretty good, right?" Yeah. And I, I mean, I cut hair better than like the barracks barber. Yeah. Or the on the base barber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was like, "Yeah." So I was like, you know, cutting people's hair. And you started getting through the Hispanic and then, like, dudes, the whole right? Day, yeah, oh, I did good. I did okay. good, but that was like the whole day I was cutting hair. Okay. The whole day I was like, "This is cool," you know, yeah. in the middle of a, a war zone. But that's that's. There's guys awesome. over here holding security, and I'm yeah. over here cutting hair. So yeah, I cut hair all day. That's kind of what like warmed people up to me. Yeah, because I was giving good haircuts. For and sure, like, dude. I don't, you know, I don't care where you are. Yeah, I want a good haircut. The what, dude? You'd be surprised. Like, pe- what? As soon as you start cutting somebody's hair, dude, it's like a little mm-hmm. therapy session. People just open up, and you get to see like another side of them. Right. So that was cool. That I was in Samara, and we pushed down to Diwania. We went from there, and it was an old uh, like Iraqi air base. Yeah. So we were there. Um, Arlie Emery came to visit us. And the Spanish came to visit us, and then we were guarding this bank. So we were guarding this bank, and then it was the day Uday and Kuse were killed. And uh, who were those guys? Uh, Saddam's sons. Oh. So then, like the city just erupted. So we were like, "What, what city is this?" Uh, Diwania. Okay. So we were like, we had like two guys up top holding security, and then everyone else was inside. It was a bank. So it was like it was. No, no one was going to get in. It was impenetrable. Have you already had your first firefight? No firefights yet. Okay. And then, so, we just hear gunfire. So everyone's, like, running up to the rooftop, and all the, you know, all the rounds are pointed upwards. Like you just see, like, you know, they're just, they're celebrating. Okay. Like, oh, cool. And then, like, that's when we get word, like, oh, they just killed Udi and Kuse. Um, so we're chilling. We're hanging out. And then, next thing you know, my buddy Tope gets shot. So we're on the roof. We're all on the rooftop, and he gets shot between, like, the luckiest shot ever for him because yeah. it, it was between his it, between his spine and his heart. It went right between that. So he gets hit. He goes down. And that's your buddy. My buddy Tope. And I can't. We kind of see a silhouette, like a couple buildings over. Yeah. But everyone's shooting, but no one's shooting at us. Yeah. So we like open up. Like I, I didn't have um, positive ID, so I didn't open up. But my squad leader opens up. He's like, he's dumping. He's already been in combat. Like not, not me. I just didn't feel like I, I don't know if that's you know where the where where it came from. Yeah. We got a medevac tow. Um. So then like QRF comes, and this is already Bush already cleared a ceasefire. So mm. we're kind of not like yeah. in that mindset. Like for me anyway, I wasn't. You know, the boys had already seen comment, but for me, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, this is fun. I'm working out all day. I'm eating off the, you know, uh, it was Gus, which is like a a local food. It's like kind of like a pita bread with lamb, cucumber, tomato. Mm. So good. Like a pastor style. It was like, like on the on okay. skirt. Yeah. So good. But how, how far is your buddy from you when he gets hit? Uh, a couple feet. Like, I just see him drop, call Doc, and... And, like, you're in a building? We're on the rooftop of the bank. Oh, okay. So they met about him, but it, he was like, it was bad. It was close to the heart, close yeah. to the spine. Okay. You know? And it just went through his plate carrier. I think it stayed. No, he, we weren't wearing any plates. We were on top of, like, we weren't, like, in a defensive posture whatsoever. You guys we were just hanging out. Yeah, we were just smoking and joking. Like, it wasn't, oh. like, there was no threat. Like, oh, no there way. There was already a ceasefire. Okay. It was, it was peaceful. Yeah. So we thought. Before IEDs, so like right after the like right after the uh, Bush declared the ceasefire, like it was kind of nothing for a little bit. Yeah. And then as we're leaving the you know, that's when like IEDs started happening. We had Humvees with no doors. Our that's, turrets I, had no. We had no uh, up armor. That's, that's so crazy. When I see images like that, 
Yeah. Like on the internet, I'm like, dude, that shit is fucking crazy. That shit is wild. No armor on these vehicles or nothing. Yeah, that's that's how it was. That's fucking crazy. We thought we were like, oh, this is over. Yeah. We're going home soon. Yeah. Did um your buddy did he survive? So he survived. Oh, thank God. Tope survives, yeah. And uh, white dude. White dude. All right. So he was cool. Been at my parents' house. My parents, uh, for being so close, like we would always, they would host a lot of the guys. So we would always, okay. you oh. know. Yeah, we, I brought him over to the carne asada. Yeah, much. oh, yeah, that's sick. So all the time, yeah, it was cool. That's awesome. So they got they found out what real guacamole, what real Mexican food, honestly. Yeah, they were blown away. So, so that day, were did you return fire or anything? I did not return fire. Uh, okay. My team leader returned fire. And we gave her little statements, and I believe Tope got a purple heart, but no combat action ribbon. That's how oh. weird it was. So then, that's uh, how it be. Yeah, the Spaniards came and relieved us. Working out, hanging out, it was it was a good time. Yeah. It, uh, well, so I thought you know I felt safe. It wasn't mm -hmm. it's was just a trip being in the, you know, from boot camp to SOI to you're now you're in a country. Yeah. Within like six months of being in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Pr uh, pretty crazy. D describe like like being you know that scene that you just described where you're chilling in Iraq to like compared to like when you're at Camp Margarita, is it like you're super anxious here, and then over here you're like, oh, yeah, it's not so bad. Margarita was a little crazy because it's you're planning for the worst. Okay. You're planning for, like, World War Three, pretty much. Okay. You're like, oh, you're going to go. So everybody's jab. stressed yeah. out. You know, you're, you're, you're hearing about the Iraqi Republican Guard. You're hearing about, like, you know, they're going to fight, you know, to the end. Okay. You're hearing stories. You know, we're all going to the PX to buy these knives. And you're like, oh, I'm going to have to bayonet somebody, stab somebody. Mm. Like, so you're preparing, right? And then you get there and it's like, oh, it's nothing. Yeah. For me, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't take the contact. For sure. the, yeah. You know, I wasn't yeah. um, with 3 5 at the tip of the spear, mm -hmm. invaded the country. Like for me, it was, I didn't yeah. see nothing. Uh -huh. I just saw people waving. Yeah. And like they liked us there. So I thought, yeah. I was having a good time. I was a tourist. That's when I had the, you know, take, sh taking a picture. Like, oh, this is, <laughs> oh, this is awesome, you know? Do you have a picture of you when you were cutting hair? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a. You gotta send me that picture. I, got the, I was dude. cutting my uh, platoon sergeant there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's fucking badass, dude. Got a few pictures. Yeah. So, um, so after your buddy gets shot, um, how far along in the deployment are you guys? The tail end. Like we're about ready to go home. Okay. So this is a, like summertime or something. Oh yeah, it was hot, man. I remember we used to sleep on the rooftop. Yeah. I saw mat, no blanket, nothing. Yeah. Oh, just, just chilling. Just so nice. Yeah, skivvy shorts, and that was it. Uh huh um pretty much yeah maybe like a month i i can't not definitive on it but like we were gone like within two months of that uh, okay back here in the states yeah okay. the helos came the chinooks came the diwania and we had our little sticks and we rehearsed and then you get on the bird and like yeah Damn. you know like i'm doing cool stuff yeah and um they flew us out of there and we headed home yeah Right on. And um, so you probably got home like around like August or something or yeah, September. Know. Yeah. So how was um, how was life after that deployment? Was it kind of like whatever, or were you guys? Did you have any like PTSD from after that deployment, or did you have a hard time with anything? No, got back in country. Uh, my my biggest thing was. I knew that I didn't do anything. I knew that I wasn't in any combat. I knew that, I, you know, nothing had happened. You know, I didn't do anything significant. Yeah. So when I got back, all my family was like, did you kill nobody? Did you kill anybody? Okay. And I was kind of, I was honestly like a little embarrassed. And I was like, uh, you know, don't, I don't want to talk about it, you know, yeah. like stuff like that. Uh, that was like the family side. We went on block leave, came back to work. And for a while, it was chill. Like, the, you know, like there was mm -hmm. kind of felt like, hey, you know, it's gonna be peacetime. Even our CEO, like he wasn't, he wasn't cracking the whip. We weren't like working hard. Yeah. And then so we're so now that we're back, uh, two four starts to take contact in Fallujah, and that's the, they call it like the first battle of Fallujah. Mm. And I lost two buddies from boot camp were with two four. Oh damn. And they lost their lives, and that's when things started like get serious. We started hearing about IEDs. Yeah. And things started ramping up, like ramping up, like hey, we're going back. So I believe that captain got relieved, and that's when Captain Shantosh checks in. Mm. Um, he's the one who won the Navy Cross. Wow. 
So uh, he was a, he was actually a first lieutenant, but they frocked him the captain. Um, just just a big ass white, like yeah. just Jack, dude. Just looked yeah. like he was cut out of stone, like just looked like a statue. So at his uh, his ceremony or his change of command ceremony, he gets on deck and he tells us, "Men of India Company." It's like physical discipline. Oh shit. I forgot. Oh. Discipline and physical fitness. Brace for impact. And we're like, what the heck just yeah. happened, man? So now he started to implement like five and five. So we'll go run five miles to the old course five old course five times. Wow. He would ask somebody a question, and if you didn't know the answer, drop blouses and we go run. And he was just mm. cracking the whip, dude, just yeah. slaying people. Uh, just a great captain, like yeah. the perfect captain for what was leading up to us going to for Fruzier sure. In 04. Yeah, that's how you got to be. You're gonna do something like yeah, that. Yeah, he was gangster. Yeah, he made us paint the old course at three uh, at uh, uh, Fifth Marines old course. Mm -hmm. Like the first obstacle, he, we had to paint it black, and we were a diesel company, so he he he. It was a skull with the uh, the the cross oars with the mm -hmm. with a skull. Yeah. We had our Team India shirts. He was he was just tough tough dude. And then I whipped his ass. You whipped his ass? What do you mean? So we uh, we had like uh, before he checked in, we had like uh, like a bull in the ring. Okay. We at the old course, and you know like you know Marine oh. three Marines was he was the toughest. Yeah. So he uh, so they get one one dude from each squad, each platoon. So each each platoon had three guys. So all three guys go in, so it's you know twelve dudes, right? Uh, first, second, third, and then weapons. So you had twelve dudes going to ring, tap out, or get thrown out. Okay. So I, I, so out of everybody, I win. Yeah. So my homie, so it was I was the last guy in the ring with uh, my buddy Hammond. And you're you're camp. what like a lance? Uh, PFC, PFC. Probably. Okay. No, oh, no, yeah, I was a lance because I got promoted to the lance in uh, at Diwania. So he hits me with a triangle. So he hits me with a mm. triangle, but the rules were tap out, pass out, or get thrown out of the ring. So I just like picked them up and just threw them out, <clears throat> threw them out mm. the, the little pit, yeah. and I won. So like I'm like now the little tough guy for India Company. Yeah. So now, so so Shanta checks in, and now we go to we do winter package Bridgeport. Mm. So now, you know, you do your little acclimation. You do your little hikes around the base, and then you do like before you go up to the mountain. Yeah. So now, so now you have your. So we've done that, and now we're gonna hike up the mountain. Those Mickey Mouse boots were like cutting into my calf. Like okay. both boots just. I, I mean, I'm I'm short. Yeah. But I got big calves. Yeah. So like my calf to leg ratio for for that Mickey Mouse boot was just digging into my calf. Yeah. Okay. So. So before this, so we're on the bus going to, to uh, to Bridgeport. So Shantosh gets on the bus. He goes, who's the toughest motherfucker here? And my squad leader grabs my hand. And, he picks <laughs> yeah. me up, and I'm like asleep. And he goes, you? And I was like, dude, like, what would you just do? Like, you know. Yeah. And um, to, my, to my squad leader, I was like, damn. You know. So now I got a little target on my back. So now we go to Bridgeport. And now we're going up the mountain. And I'm, I'm falling out. Like, my, that Mickey Mouse boot is cutting into my calves. Yeah. So we're like, we're, we're, we're humping up the, up the mountain. I gotta pull over. I drop my rug. Yeah. And I, I grabbed two skibby shirts and I stuffed the skibby shirts in, in the boot. Yeah. So it was yeah. you know, to help me to provide a little uh, cushion. While this is going on, Shantosh walks by me and he goes like, and you're and you're tough. Right? So he goes up the mountain and I'm like, dude, this guy, right? So I, you know, put my ruck back on and I start humping, start getting after it. But, but but like you know he, he like that little thing to him was like dude you ain't worth it like you you yeah. ain't tough you're falling yeah, out of yeah. bucks. But so we get to the top of the mountain, and then um, we had when, when before we went up the mountain though, you stage your tent you know so you got your 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 tent you got your, your pretty much you have your uh, your tent packed, and I remember I duct taped this thing and I put like. Uh, he manages everywhere, right? Yeah. So to make sure that this bag was ours, we got them. We're about to freeze, you know. So we get up the mountain, and then they, you know, the little they have these like these tracks, like snowmobiles with tracks. Uh -huh. 
Marine Corps version. So they get up the mountain and they're just dumping all the all the tents out. They're throwing them out. Everyone's shaking them out. Everyone's trying to get you know. So people are hey you know so and so so and so you know you know this squad this platoon whatever. So everyone's grabbing their tent and literally, I, I'm the, I'm the last guy there with no tent. Mm. I'm like, dude, what happened to my tent? We're about to freeze. Yeah. So luckily we find we well not luckily we find a tent, but it's not our tent and it's like missing stuff. So then. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm gonna walk around the campsite. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find our tent. There's like, there's no way. It was clearly marked. I had, I was like, I made, I made sure that I was thorough that 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 I was gonna find my tent. Yeah. Like it was like, just put a couple, put your name on it somewhere. But like, I was like, dude, I overkilled it. Like, duct taped it everywhere. Put my name everywhere. Like, dude, we're gonna get our tent. So I walk around the site and I see my tent. It was, it was our platoon sergeant and the squad leaders had had my. They, it was like a, I want to say it was packed in a in a sea bag. Yeah. And I see my tent. It's got my name on it, and my name on it. So I'm like, "Hey, uh, Corporal Ward, this is uh, this is our tent." He's like, "No, it ain't." I'm like, "Corporal Ward, this is this is our tent. I'm a I'm a Lance Corporal. This is our tent." He's like, "It's got my name on it." He goes, "No, it's not." He goes, "What are you gonna do about it?" I was like, "What?" And I'm like, "This is my." So I got loud. I'm like, "This is our tent. Like, this is like you know, you know, yeah. Marine Corps morals, like, or For sure. you know." Yeah. You know, honor, courage, commitment, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, this is like, I packed it righteously. Like, this is ours. Yeah. So I get real loud. So Shantosh hears this and he gets up and he goes, fight for it. So I got my Gore-Tex. I just zip it off, throw it off. Look at Copa Ward. He goes, take it. Mm -hmm. I grab my damn tent. I'm like, that's right. So that was cool. So that was, cool. that was one cool, one, one pro for Shantosh. Yeah. So we do the winter package. We go back down. That's you know, a sick ass dude. Fight for it. So he he was he did a lot of things cool, man. He like when we go on PT runs, he goes, yeah. Hey, fall out, run at your own. Like run, you don't we're gotta run in formation. Just he's just a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Like, honestly, like no homo, like this dude was bad. Yeah. Um so great CEO, like I said, like he was so knowledgeable, he was a Mustang, mm. super knowledgeable, just for what was for what was to come for us, the perfect CEO. Like you couldn't ask for a better CEO. Okay. Um, no respect, no disrespect to all the other CEOs out there, but just at the time, like that's what we needed. So we come back from from Bridgeport winter winter package. We come back down and I did something, and then we go to CAX. So now we go to CAX and uh, where's CAX? Uh, Twenty nine Palms. Okay, okay. So if we went from the winter. The okay, snow yeah. to now the desert. desert. Yeah. So we're running ranges, and we we had just done a we had just done a range, and now like everyone is is going back like to our our um. What do you call that shit? Like the staging area, your where you live, where you hang out, your like bivouac site. Okay, yeah. You go back to your bivouac site, but now we're all mixed for some reason. And he and Shantosh is talking shit to me. And he's like grilling me. And I'm like, sir, like, whenever you want to give me the chance. And he's like, yeah, you fell out at Bridgeport. Like, I don't think they're worth it. And there was a sergeant from MSG. Yeah. And I had proven myself. Like, I had rolled and I had won some, you know, like our little company rolling matches. Like, I had I had I had a foot to stand on. Like they knew like I wasn't I was yeah. I was pretty decent, like, you know. So it wasn't like they were just gassing me up for no reason. And he's like, Well, sir, you're talking a lot of shit to him. You're talking a lot of shit to Jimmy. So they call me Jimmy. He called me that. He called, uh, Shantaj gave me that nickname, Jimmy. So he goes, you're talking a lot of shit to Jimmy. He goes, you know, why don't you give him a shot? Like, you know, yeah, he ain't worth it. He goes, well, let's find out. <laughs> so now we get back to our, our bivouac site and they're having chow. I'm like, he's talking shit to me. I'm like, sir, you know what? I'm really tired of it, sir. Like either like, let's do it or like, leave it alone. He goes, all right, then he goes, drop blouses. So he takes off his shirt. Like, he thinks it's like, you know, he's at the beach. You know, he's, yeah. he's trying to flex. I was like, well, first of all, we're rolling on sand, so I'm not stupid. So, I, well, I take off my top. So we start rolling. And he does the, the classic, like, I'm big and strong. I shoot in. He just throws me over. Mm. So I hit my feet, and I roll. And like, now we're chest to chest. Now I'm on top of him. Like, I'm just wearing him out, just trying, okay. trying to wear him out. So we roll, we roll. And again, same thing. We, we, we break free. He uh, 
I don't know if he did it on purpose, but he kicked dirt in my face. Oh. And I was like, and I ate it, like ate yeah. dirt. So I had to, they had to stop the match, right? I mean, he, thankfully, he recognized it, didn't like try to keep going. Mm. Uh, so I like rinse my mouth out and I'm like, all right, go. So we start going again. Same thing, I shoot in and he does a little suplex. But like, if you wrestle, like, this, this, doesn't, it looked good, but it doesn't do nothing. Yeah. So he flips me and like, I do the same thing, boom, like, land on my feet, like, so I'm landing, but then I turn. Okay. Now I'm chest to chest, so I'm, I'm on him again. Yeah. So we kept rolling, we kept rolling, and now I'm just like, just like I'm just, I didn't want to win. Oh man, I forgot this other story. But anyway, so yeah. So I, we um, before we went up north, we had a we, when we were doing the five and five at uh, San Mateo. So five O course, five miles. Mm-hmm. This fool was so like Chantage said, me and all the officers, so him and his four lieutenants against eight NCOs. Or against eight of whoever uh, eight enlisted, so it was me, a platoon sergeant from another platoon, and Shanta. So it was three. Of, it was two, us two against him. We took him out easily. We took yeah. we, we take him down, and so so that that was another thing that I had. Okay. I forgot about that one. So I I I, I uh, hit him with the rear naked. The uh, platoon sergeant like he took his legs, and I took his back rear naked, and boom, he was he was out. But he was the last one standing. But he was just like the arrogance for him, like oh me and my LTUs are gonna take out eight enlisted. Oh, well, I almost did, but luckily, yeah. you know, I was there. Yeah. All five foot four of me. <laughs> so, so the, yeah, so now it's 29 palms, so now we're rolling again. So we're rolling, and and I'm just wearing him out. I'm just wearing him out. He's getting tired. Yeah. He's getting more tired. He, he's, a big, he's, a, he's a big muscular guy. So I'm wearing him out, and then I remember I just, the best double leg I've ever done, like perfect textbook, like just, uh-huh. Picked him up, dude. Luckily, you know, I'm not tall, so it wasn't very, very. Fall. Yeah. Uh, he didn't. He didn't fall very far, but double leg him, boom! Right, and like the whole company just like jumps up. Oh, right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm like, don't get too. I haven't won yet. Yeah. You know? And now I'm just like, just wearing him out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm giving it to him, dude. Like just bad. Like I don't mind taking a punch. I don't mind taking a hit, but I'm gonna give like seven back. That's the one. Yeah. But I, so I'm just giving it to him, like just ugly, dude. Just. Forms to his like to, throw like but face, not, nothing to win yet like nothing okay. to take him out like yeah. I want him to suffer okay I'm putting my knees in his ribs like I'm just like ribs yeah, yeah. just 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 everything I can do to hurt him yeah and he's just like squilling and finally he just rolls over like he just rolls over and I don't rear naked him yeah I don't hit him with a rear naked I just cross faced him just underneath like, okay, okay, face okay. the yeah. nose and just like pulled up and just wrenched on him until he tapped Ooh. and he taps and that so. That was pretty cool. Uh, I forgot, let me backtrack a little bit. So when we got to 29 Palms, the Commandant flies in with helos, mm-hmm. lands, and gives him his Navy Cross. Like, you know, like big formation. Yeah. All the, you know, the pageantry, dog and pony show, all the cameras are there, and he got his Navy Cross there. Okay. And then a couple of weeks later, like, I did that to him. <laughs> so. That's fucking badass. Do you know what a, what a Navy Cross is? So it's, it's like medal. it's like Medal of Honor and then Navy Cross. So and it's been upgraded, like so he's gonna get the Medal of Honor. Oh no way, yeah. really? It's gonna improve, yeah. So he's gonna get the Medal of Honor. So your father fucked up a dude who's a future Medal of Honor recipient. Never tells me <laughs> worst worst part is the guy who won the Medal of Honor, how he I haunt his dreams. He tells his kid, like, there's a little Mexican dude, five foot four. Out there somewhere. He, I mean, we we keep in contact and he always brings it up, but I was like trying to be humble. So what what did he do? So, how I understood it is in the initial invasion of Iraq. Yeah. So three five when they when they went in, so you have like we were in tracks tracks. He was in cat platoon, so he was in a Humvee. He was the lead vehicle of first mar or I think it's first marine division. Like I think he was the lead vehicle of the whole convoy. Of the whole thing. Of the whole convoy. Wow. When they took contact, he he ordered his driver to to hit a berm. Okay. A, the trench line where where the um, Iraqi forces were. He hits the trench line. The 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 turret gunner is opening up with a fifty cal. He jumps out and he cleared the whole he cleared the whole trench line, and he killed like they say like seventeen people. Yeah. But like him and his and his uh, whoever was in the vehicle with him like helped him. Yeah. And he was going. He was like picking up AKs, picking up weapons, and Just he cleared like seventeen dudes. Yeah. No way. Yeah. So he got the native cross. Wow. Gangster. And it's getting upgraded to Medal of Honor. Like official. Yeah. Like you got approved. Well, when did when did that get? I, I don't know how long it like takes, but yeah. So, wow, and it's captain 
Tam Chantage. He retired Chantage. as a major Chantage. Major Chantage. Wow. Yeah. That's the best imagine. part, though. The best part, he gets to tell stories about me. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so every time I meet somebody, it's like, same thing. like, oh, you know him? I'm like, yeah, I know him. He killed 17 dudes, but, but fucking, you fucked him up. And one day. That's pretty yeah, bad. 32 minutes, man. He, I was uh, pretty, like, super cool. Like, Do you guys stay in range. touch? Uh, so he did. He, yeah, I, I I follow him on uh, social media. He called. He Facetime me one time, like the most random face call, uh, Facetime, and I I picked up, and he was laughing. He was remember when I kicked your ass, and I started laughing. I was like, that's not how I remember it, sir. <laughs> and uh, so he's yeah, he's he's cool. Yeah, retired as major chantage. Wow, that's that's fucking sick. All right, so let's fast forward to um. So after Twenty Nine Palms, um, this is a pre deployment to go to Fallujah 04. Okay, and um, so at the twenty nine palms, you guys come back to Pelton, I'm assuming, and then just what chill out for a little bit and then push out to back to Iraq. We get ready to go to Iraq. I don't think we had any more uh, training. I don't, I don't, I don't think just a bunch of like slate. Like he would slay the shit out of us. He would slay the shit out of the company, uh, which was what we needed. Yeah, a lot of PT sessions. Uh, yeah, and then we deployed to. Fallujah, 2004. Right on. And uh, we didn't know it was, you know. We saw the two four guys that, that had been hurt. They were coming back, and they were at the chow hall. And you see them pretty messed up. And it's like when reality got hit, like, damn, dude. like At the chow hall here? At, uh, yeah, 5th Marines chow okay. hall. And you, you just start seeing, like, more and more wounded show up. Yeah. And it's, like, heartbreaking because, like, dude, like, that fool's younger than me. Like, yeah. You know, at the time I was like 19. Wounded like amputee and shit um, like that. Amputees, no, but just like braces, boo, like just yeah, missing. Well, not, yeah, I don't remember missing limbs, but it was just because if they were missing limbs, they wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Because uh, they were still in, like, their unit was still in country, so it was, everything was still fresh. Okay. But yeah, you can just, you can just you see. You can just see it. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, damn, dude, like this is, this is what's happening. Yeah. <clears throat> and then in the chat hall, like the news is always going on, and you just start hearing more and more about yeah. the insurgency and the insurgency, IEDs now. Yeah, and no, like, for we, sure. We were in Iraq, and yeah. we didn't see not one IED. Yeah, and then you start you see these guys at the chat yeah. hall, and it's just like everything is just connected. We start training for uh, IEDs, and like you hear, so they start telling us stories. So we start hearing people's stories about IEDs, and you're like, dang. Yeah. And uh, we pushed out. We pushed out. We landed in, I want to say TQ. TQ, because you had the TQ and you had the mech. Uh, Alta Katum was TQ, and then first, like, I, I forget what. So this is what, like September 04 or something like I that? I want to say something like that, yeah. I yeah. want to say, because we were there in October and it was like slow. We were just like um, holding security like around weird places, like nothing was going on yet. Okay. And then they hit us with the, they hit us with the operation order. Oh, we're about to. What was weird is that like all the generals like started coming down and talking to us. Yeah. So like this one general starts talking to us. Oh, it was General Natansky. And then somebody else, and the regimental commander, the current full board colonel, and the BC. You know, like man, you guys are gonna do great things. Uh, this is a uh, Colonel Malay, who uh, Carlos was with his. Uh, it was his security detachment for him. And then Cop Captain Chantage comes up and he goes, I don't give a fuck about apple pie, the American flag. He goes, you look to the left, look to your right. This is why you're, you're fighting. You know, he's like, I don't give a shit about, about any of that. Like, we, you know, we got a mission. Do what you got to do. Get home to your families. And we're like, kind of like, like, what's going on? You know, like, we yeah. still kind of don't understand the gravity of the situation. Okay. So... And then, like, started doing feints into Fallujah, like, so they would go, like, hit a hit an area. And then they started to coordinate it off. So they started, like, dropping leaflets, saying, like, hey, we're going to we're gonna invade in a month. You guys have a month to clear out. Like, flyers yeah, and shit? Yeah, flyers are dropping flyers. And, like, we're kind of, like, we're doing more and more rock drills. We're planning. We're, like, talking about it more. Do more, like, uh, combat life sa lifesaver courses. You know, mm. Stop the bleeding. Yeah. You know, the airway. And we're like, damn. Yeah. You know, what's going on? And then, like, 
hey, we're about to invade Fallujah. Kind of like, we're like, invade Fallujah? Like, we're already in Iraq. How are we going to invade it again? Yeah. And then, like, you, you, you start hearing, like, okay, you know, these are who we got. This is, you know, everyone's on station. And then we went in the city. Yeah. So, um, so like, coming into this deployment, since you already deployed the first time, are you just, like, say, more, like, you're more comfortable with it? I had a lot to prove because you had the guys who already had been in combat. So you got the combat action ribbon guys. Yeah. You got the guys that haven't been in combat. Yeah. That whole workup, it was like, I know what I'm capable of. I know that when, you know, when we get fired at or we take contact, I know what I'm going to do. But I haven't done it yet. Yeah. So these guys are like more seasoned they're more credible. You know, like they have, they have something on us. Um, so part of me couldn't wait to prove myself. Yeah. And... Shortly after that, you know, I did. So, do you remember um, the first like "oh shit," like "oh we're in fucking Fallujah" moment? It was the, the the like when we first entered. Like, so we staged, we staged outside Fallujah, and I remember Shantosh was on top of a track, and he's like sitting on a track with 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 binos, and he's like like all like interested, like trying to look at like where we're gonna where we're gonna hit, try to find like a week, a, like a yeah. A foothold in the city, like where where to hit the nick lick that that dang like I don't know, it's like a mort, it's like a charge that they they shoot out and it just it'll okay. blow up like a straight line. And okay, okay. It's, a, it's a it's a pathway in. All right. So we had worked on the nick lick like in Cax, and you kind of like the first time I ever seen it. So kind of seeing like, but just just that 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 he was serious, like he was like you know he was all in. So like you hear the boom, it was night. It was you hear the boom. And then the tracks, we start moving in, boom, boom, boom. And then all the guys who were on air security, like, just start opening up. And I don't think anyone knew what they were shooting at. I think they were just, you know, shooting that direction. We were about to, you know, hit the city. Okay. So. So you guys enter at nighttime. We enter at nighttime. And we just start, everyone starts opening up. And I wanted to, like, go up air sentry. I was a saw gunner, so I wanted to start shooting. Um, but I didn't. So I stayed. I stayed. I kept my discipline, and they're shooting. And then the ramp, the ramp drops, and then like, you know, like go to that house. And so we all go in, we clear it, we kind of go firm for a second, we kind of get our wits about us, kind of get our bearings and see what's going on. And then we started clearing house to house, mm. and that's when it started that night. And we we're just, to me, I was still like naive because like I, I look back about what I was doing, like I was running through doors because we couldn't get in. So and then I was running through doors before they gave us a sledgehammer. I'm running through doors, and I, I'm like just diving through it to open it and then they're clearing it and it was like um it was stupid but yeah, there was no there was, technically there was no threat yet like so, well i mean luckily we didn't take any contact so we're going and i'm like i'm just exhausted like i've never been so tired in my life and then so we go from that night we go from that night and i i think i had heat exhaustion so we were like on the very top of the roof and we we go firm we had the four corners and everyone's got fire. We're like, you know, we have fire watch. Yeah. And I just remember, like, I need to throw up. Like, I just felt like mm. I was about to yak. So, like, I run down. There was, like, kind of like a, a little, another, <clears throat> thing. Um, it was a door. I went out the door. And there was another balcony. And I just started yakking. But I, I had took off my flak and I took off my top. So I'm just in a skivvy shirt. And I just start yakking. And then I hear the two. A, a double a double tap like pa pa, mm. but it was it was clearly five five six, yeah. and I just felt like the shockwave go by me, and mm. I knew it was friendly forces. I'm like motherfucker, what the fuck are you shooting? I have positive ID, you know. I was so close to getting like dusted right there. Like I just I felt the two rounds yeah? behind me. Oh, no yeah. way! I was like, damn. So somebody thought you were like yeah, like it's an, uh, insert, an insert wow. enemy, and um. That was like my first, like, oh my god, like, yeah, I almost got hit by friendly fire. Yeah, no, that's wild. Yeah, that, that sucked. Did you see the guy who was shooting? Oh, mm -hmm. he was probably pretty far, huh? I didn't see nothing. I mean, we were we had all the buildings, like, so I don't okay, know for okay. like them to like think. And it was dark. It was dark, and uh, again, like, I'm not wearing anything. Like, I just have my skivvy shirt on, and I just ooh, throwing up. Like, just luckily, like, his aim was off, his sight was yeah. off, like, but. The double tap and it was like yeah i just feel them whiz by me mm. and i was like damn yeah 
And then I go up and I'm like, dude, someone just shot at me, green on green, and just like pass out. Oof. Yeah. I'm tired. And then we do it again, and then we started clearing. We started clearing the city. All day, just clearing? All day. All day, every house. From when we end, like from how we started, all the battalions, and we just started sweeping through. Door to door, door to door, door to door. Just. Yeah. And then. How long did it take for you guys to finally, like, get contact? Um, dang. Personally, for me, like, so the, squ the squad had already been. Between everybody taking contact, I believe South already got shot in the face. South was about to kick a door open. He got shot in the face. He Again, survived? I, yeah, he survived. Okay. So I wasn't there. But for us, so we take we take this building. We go to the rooftop. And this was South had been shot a couple houses down. And it was me, White, and the LT. All right, then. It was kind of like, kind of like a break. It was a lull. There was nothing going on. And you just hear this lone shot. And then you just see the, the LT just drop. Boom. The LT drops. Clean. The body, his body's clean. Nothing. Yeah. Right? Like, he's got no, like, like where did, where did it go in? Like, yeah. how, where did it hit you? Mm. And you just see him struggling to take, take, take his, his, he's fighting for his breath. You know, he's fighting for his life. And just, you can just see the life leaving his body. Yeah. And then you just see him take his last breath. And he's gone. Wow. And that was it. So we don't know if we got sniped or whatnot. I'm a saw gunner. I just started dumping. Closest windows. Chantosh comes up. Who's got, a, who's got an arm? We throw some frag. I was like, I do. Throw a frag. I'm a saw gunner. I just want to throw a grenade. Yeah. I feel better about you know him passing. And they had to carry him. This was a big dude. Mm -hmm. He played a wide receiver for uh, Annapolis. Oh, way. So they had to carry him out. I'm a saw gunner, so I just started running to like the, the corner, started shooting. Yeah. As I got to the stairs, I ran down the stairs and I just kept shooting, just kept shooting. I was like doing my part. And then they got him out of there. That was our first KIA for our platoon. What was it Lieutenant? Lieutenant Blacksmith from uh, San Marino, which is like by Pasadena. Wow. And the worst part was I guess his dad was in Vietnam. And his dad was in my company, which my company was like the was what became India Company. So they pulled wow. some like good old boy strings to get him in the India Company. Wow. So they got him in the India Company, and then this this happens. And that was uh I'm not sure. It was right around Veterans Day, Marine Corps birthday, like November tenth, eleventh. Yeah. And then uh, so he passed. And then we get a new lieutenant. Lieutenant Jensen, he's like probably Lieutenant Colonel Jensen now. So he shows up the next day, <clears throat> and uh, so we start. We kept clearing. We kept clearing some more in Fallujah, well, obviously. And um, but now there's like a vibe now. Now the energy's changed. Now it's like you know, it's real now. Yeah. So we, we cleared a couple houses, and then we got like we go in this one house, and he's just kind of like. Something wasn't right about this house. Yeah. I think, like, the stove was on or, like, the kettle was... They just turned off the kettle. Like, there was still heat coming from the kitchen. Like, something was being cooked. Mm. So we make entry, and everyone's, like, spooked now, like, because we can feel it. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we get to the stairwell. I was the fifth man on the stack. So you had, you had Ward, or you had Tope, the guy who got shot the, my first mm -hmm. appointment. So you had Tope leading the stack. You had Ward. Uh... Bobby Trailer and Gabe White and then me. So now we go up the the stringer of stairs, the step, and you have the landing, the flat part, and then you have the stringer of stairs again, the the, the steps. So now we get to the, up the stairs, and now it's a a, a a T hallway. So you got left and right, and then you have a fatal front, and you have a door to the front. So <clears throat> Topin and Topin Ward go right, Trailer and White go left. And I hold security to the front. So Tope kicks the door open. I'm not sure if it was left leg, right leg, but when he kicks the door open, luckily when he takes a step, uh, I think the dude was a, he had an RPK, so it was a bipod, like kind of like an AK with a bipod, like a little mm -hmm. longer. Yeah. So he takes a shot, and it hits him in the leg, and he falls back. He falls back on Ward, and then Gabe or uh, yeah, Bobby and and Gabe they turn. 
and then they start like shooting and they start pulling but it was funny because because tope is like he's hit and he's telling ward you know shoot him he's giving his rifle like shoot him shoot him shoot him um but ward is like he's he's froze he doesn't do shit mm. um so trailer and white pull pull them to like down the stairs so I kind of like went to the landing and I just started it's like once they were clear I just started shooting to the corner the corner of the of that hallway to make sure they didn't come out so I started dumping they bring them so now they go past me they go down the stairs so now they're starting to like medevac them so I just kept shooting I go to the bottom of the stairs and now I'm just like shooting up to make sure they don't come out so now they're like trying to like get them outside the they're on the first floor they're trying to get them outside the courtyard um, outside into the street so I just run out the house go to the courtyard and I just start shooting just to the to the uh, the balcony on the second floor so I just start opening up just dumping uh, next thing you know a grenade goes off I don't know if homeboy threw a grenade or lieutenant just throws a grenade up and it doesn't go over or whatnot but it lands and he gets hit with the grenade so he gets fragged and I just kept shooting so now the team, the whole, the, the, our squad pulls out, we're safe, and I just keep shooting. I stop shooting, Homeboy, pull, he, he comes up with an old German stick grenade. He just this old German stick grenade, and he just chucks it, right? And I just see it, like, coming at me, like, Like, um, like the dude inside the, the house, yeah. he throws it at you? Throws it at me. Mm. So I just start running like, oh my God. Right. So I start counting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. There was a track right there. So I get to the track, get behind the track and I'm like 10,000. I'm like, ah, it's not going to go off. So now I go back and I kick the grenade. I don't know why I kicked the grenade. So I kick the grenade and I just take a knee right and I'm like, all right, I'm ready. So I'm just aiming in, right? So now he, pop, now he, he comes up again with, with, with pyro, like a white star cluster, you know, yeah. like a, I just see the I just see the shape. I just recognize it right. He just comes up and I just went just started walking so just, you know, because you can see the plaster you can see of mm -hmm. the of the balcony. So I remember I'm just aiming right, like kind of where he's at in line, and I just walked my rounds up mm -hmm. and just got him like four times. Boom, wow. And he just drops. Bam. Wow. And I was like, I got him. I got him. Was was it like? Did it feel like slow motion or anything like that? I did. It did. It did. Felt. It felt. It felt like. Um, and this is this is the importance to me about playing sports, like whether it's baseball, kicking a penalty, being in a jiu-jitsu match. You need to be under pressure. Mm -hmm. Like it's good for us to be under pressure because you can understand pressure when it's when it's when it happens to you. I do feel like time slowed down, and I just felt like that. All my training. I was able to recognize that it was pyro. Like I knew there was no threat, right? Like I didn't, it wasn't shaped like a, like just quick instantly. Like I knew like this can't hurt me. Like I, the way, and luckily the way he threw it, like where I can see it. Yeah. So, cause I saw it come up and I was like, I knew right away it was like, yeah. it's pyro. Yeah. And I felt no threat. And I just remember just, and I just walked my rounds up and I took him out again, back to my, like play sports, like kids need to play sports. Yeah. Um, you need to be in that pressure situation because mm -hmm. that's the only way you can learn how to react. Yeah. Um, so he, he drops. We go, we go back and regroup, and then I'm pissed at like Ward. Like Ward is trying to tell because he's corporate Ward, so he's trying to tell us about what happened, right? And we're like, "You got no credibility right now. Like, no one wants to listen to you, yeah. right?" So remember, so this is the second time I seen Toby get shot. I saw Toby get shot at the bank, my first appointment, and I see him get shot again. And Ward is the one who froze. No, Ward is not the uh, Tope. The guy who uh, sorry, Tope is the one who got shot. Ward is the one who froze. He was the guy. Yeah. Behind. Okay. So word froze. Okay. Uh, yeah. Security forces, Marine. Yeah. <laughs> so he freezes, and Tope Tope's biggest concern was the tourniquet. I remember he didn't want the tourniquet too high because you know he thought like if you get amputated, like yeah. the higher the the higher the tourniquet, the higher yeah. the amputation. Yeah. But luckily for him, again, it just went right through. Didn't didn't do nothing. Oh, so this fool got shot twice in both deployments. Yeah, but now he got his purple heart. I got a second purple heart with his first combat action ribbon. Wow. And then, and this, I can't make this up. While this is happening, the chaplain shows up and get, Ward gets a Red Cross message. So now we lose Tope and now we lose Ward and we lose our platoon commander because Lieutenant Jensen just got fragged. Oh. So now he's gone. So 
So now we get our third platoon commander in three days. Wow. So we went to three LTs in three days. He said Ward got hit, got a Red, Red Cross. Cross message. Oh. And what made it worse, it was like, um, he had a, sadly, someone in his family passed, but he had the option to be like, hey, I'll deal with it when I get home, stay with my boys. Maybe we would have trusted him a little more, but he was like, I'm gone. He left. Yeah. So to me, I was like, there's, there's, you're not going to bring anybody back. Like, you could, you, you, you're more helpful to us here. Yeah. Because we're not getting any reinforcements. Yeah. So now we lost, you know, so now we're down two more guys. For sure. So now the squad got even smaller. Yeah. And uh, now, yeah, now we got our third platoon commander in three days. And we went up against the, the Terminator. So we were going down the street. Um, we take contact. I went, um, we had one team in one house, and then we had another team make entry to this house. So we go into this house, and then we hit the roof. And then... A team goes in, and luckily that dude was undisciplined, and he just opened up as they entered the gate. And he missed. And everyone was, like, falling out the gate, falling out the courtyard, and they fall back on the street. So now I'm on the roof. And as I look over, he has a 55-gallon drum, and he detonates it. And luckily it wasn't, it wasn't like, full, but it was, it was a big fireball. I remember just, like, the fireball coming, and I just, like, fell back, and I was like, damn. Almost got me. So we jump on the roof, and I just started like dumping like uh, rounds. I jump onto his house, start opening it up, and everyone's like, "Fall back, fall back!" You know, we gotta we gotta come up with a plan. So we go back, we come up with a plan. The plan was simple. This is this is this is the good thing about being infantry at the time is like, and in Fallujah, is that we had time. So they bring in the tank, and the tank just starts opening up main rounds. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. The house starts. The house collapses on top of itself. Um, catches fire, and we went firm for the night. So we go hang out for the night. And the next morning, we re-engage. We got to take that house. They take the house. Um, I think the guy was was dead. Um, squad leader like double taps him just 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 to make sure. And then that was we call him the terminator. There was more that that, that actually that 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 uh, firefight lasted actually a lot longer than that. But that's kind of like the gist of it. Is the terminator somebody you serve with? Or no, that's what we call that guy because he was just wouldn't die. Okay. Like, All we right. just would not die. Yeah, no way. Yeah. I was the Terminator. Then, uh, so we kept going. Sadly, a couple more people passed away. We lost a few more guys. And you were there to witness those? I did witness one. Uh, there was another squad, but he was across the street. They took contact, and we were, like, on the rooftop just watching. Like, everyone, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, it was, you couldn't shoot. You know they're in contact, and you're just there watching. Yeah. And then you next to, like, uh, two of the Marines carried out his body. That's when, uh... You guys saw him get hit, or he was, like, inside? No, he was door? inside, yeah. Okay. That's when, uh, one of the platoon sergeants, he went to go shoot, and his magazine fell out. Boom. And luckily, some badass Lance Corporal just dumped, boom, 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 took him out. And, uh... That was in that little... Firefight, but yeah, they saw I saw another guy get carried out, and then we just kept going. Like we just kept cleaning houses. Did you get a couple more um, kills? Yeah, I got one more. Um, we were on, uh, you know, the houses are back to back, so we cleared this house. You know, like you got, you got a street to street, but the houses are back to back. So we, we enter one house and another. One of our other spots goes into the house next door, but they're, they're behind each other, or next to each other, but, you know, one's on this side of the street, this one's on the other side of the street. So the, the backyards are touching, pretty much. Okay. So we're going, we make entry to the house, I think you hear contact, and so we all haul butt up to the roof, and I'm just opening up, trying to uh, provide su suppressive fire. So I start shooting... Right, when we start shooting, they tell them, we get word like, hey, you know, pull out of the house, pull out of the house. So now we gotta go back in the house, but there's, so now there's a stair, there's a stair, and there's the, uh, the landing, but there's a window, there's like an open part. So they're shooting into that part. So now we can't get down, so we can't get out of the house. So I just start shooting, like, because I wanna get closer, so I just, 
I'm a saw gunner. I just start shooting, opening up to get closer. So now I get to the window, and I get to the window sill, and this fool just shoots one time, hits the window sill, but again, like you, you, I can just feel that AK-47 round just like just whiz by me, just mm. just. But well, you can feel the uh, the shockwave, the power that thing had. Yeah. So, but when it hit the window sill, it it, it uh, created a lot of dust. So the dust picks up, right? So I, I know what to expect. So I like I just aim. I'm just aiming. The dust settles, and homeboy was right there. He he had it. He didn't. He wasn't in like a defensive posture. He had his AK down, but I knew it was him, and I just opened up. And... Was he like in the same building as you? He was in the alley. So okay. it was like our, the house we were in, he was in that alley below us. Okay. But I was on the second floor. He's on the he's on the ground. Also, he's floor. like shooting up. He was shooting up. And then, so he shot up and hit the windowsill. He hit the windowsill, but the way like I mean, the way I read it, the way I feel like is that he thought he got me. Mm. So he kind of like relaxed. Okay. But I mean, I felt that run go by me. Oh. And luckily for that windowsill. Yeah. And then me. you just freaking looked I down just, yeah, real quick and just looked down, around. waited for him. I waited for the dust to settle, and he wasn't even. He was expecting just, it. Yeah. It just opened up and brrr, Yeah. And he went into the he flew into the room. Mm. And those are the two that I get credit for. Yeah. So. Nice. Um so is this like towards like end of November? Uh, or it kind of just like all blends in together. Yeah, it was I don't even remember. Yeah. So do you remember when um when Carlos got hit? I do. So this would have been after all that. So we went firm. So now we we took this little con we we kind of found this little place in Fallujah that we liked that we thought was good for military, like a defensive position. Mm -hmm. We blew up a bunch of houses and we had like three houses in a corner. So now India Company's there, and then we get word that Carlos got hit, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know how bad? And they're like it's bad. So he served, you know, he was the personal security attachment for the battalion commander and the and the sergeant major. So I'm trying to like, not, like, be tactful, but I'm like, you know, platoon sergeant, like, hey, I want to know, like, how do I yeah. get more information? So I'm asking like Gunny, first sergeant, you know, like trying to like, you know, um, go past the chain of command, like, dude, like, I gotta know, I gotta know, what's going on? And then luckily. Um, you know, they were called the Gunners Girls. So the Gunner Girls show up, and the Colonel and the Sergeant Major. There, Sergeant Major Resto is a little shorter than me. Okay. Colonel Malay is a little shorter than me. I just, you know, just they were just short guys, just like me. So I always felt like a yeah, you know, short guys stick together. But I knew I knew Sergeant Major Resto pretty good. Like you know, like kind of, I had done some things, you know, wrestled and stuff like that. Like he knew me. Yeah. I felt like I had a good enough rapport that I can run up to him and ask mm. him. But, so they show up right, and he's walking the compound. And I just fucking just run, make a beeline for him. I'm like, sorry, Major. You know, I go to pray to rest. And I'm like, Cor Corporal Carlos La Raza, how is he? And I just like break down, dude. Just tears, dude. Just flowing. And he like, he's gonna make it. Well, he's like, he's bad. He's bad, but he's a fighter. You know, he's gonna make. It, he's gonna make it. I was just like, really, sorry, Major, really. But yeah, he's, he's gonna make he's gonna make you know. I don't know if he was yeah you know, but he made it yeah. So Carlos made it. Carlos had you know he had been to my house a few times, so he knew my parents, and oh. my family knew him. All right. Oh. So, yeah. So, so you guys have the, yeah uh, like after the we were we were enemies, we ended up becoming uh, workout partners. Okay. So we lifted together. So like we we bonded and yeah, we got really close. But that was the one that like yeah the first like the first one that hurt me like dude like yeah. I want to lose my friend. And uh, did did you watch that part of his interview when he talks about like? Oh yeah, I saw the the things he saw when so, he passed so, away. So time. Hodges, one of the guys that was in the stack with him, I went to SOI with him too. Mm. So it was like, damn, like knowing Hodges passed away. You know, oh, he seeing, passed away. Yeah, he was he was there with Carlos, and then hearing Carlos' side of the story, yeah, I just. So Carlos and Hodges were hit, and Hodges passed away. Yeah. Oh, oh, he didn't tell me that part of the story. Yeah, I just didn't make it. So two Marines got hit in that. I think a few, like it wasn't just them. Oh yeah. But Hodges, yeah, Hodges didn't make it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, it's, it's a crazy scene because, I, like I said, I went to boot camp with two people that, that I went to 2-4 and lost their life. My SOI instructor, Sergeant Reynoso, yeah. he passed away. Wow. Like, he, he was hit over there. He met my dad, too. Like, I was wow. like, damn, dude. And then, you know, Fallujah. How many um, friends did you, would you say um, lost their life in Fallujah or just, like, in general during your service? Clo I mean, so we're, we're still in Fallujah. Like, uh, a lot, of, I mean, a lot. Like, tight, Fallujah, I wouldn't say, just my, my, my platoon commander, and then knowing, like, some other guys from other, from other companies. Uh, Big Lou from Lima, like, he had a... You know, just a heart of gold, just a big Asian guy. Like, everyone knew him in the battalion. Yeah. Like, hearing about him sucked. And uh, we had one guy in our uh, our company, and he was killed. Well, when he when he died, his wife was giving birth. So oh. now she's giving birth, and she gets the Red Cross message at the hospital that her, you know, husband mm. passed away. Yeah. And this is stuff, like, you hear in the movies. They're like, this yeah. is who we're living in. Like, dude, this shit sucks. Yeah. Um, that was still like Fallujah 04. Then I, you know, Fallujah 06, go back and even more loss of life. But so. So you went back to Fallujah in 06? Yeah. So after Fallujah 04. So you've been to Iraq three times? Three times in the Marines and I went once in the Army. So I got oh, out. Oh, you served in the Army too? Yeah. So, goddamn. Wait, so when, when did you finish like your actual service? How, how many years did you do in the military? Uh, 20. So you were telling me you got the Marine Corps 2007, then you, there's a gap in your service? Uh, so, so we were uh, Fallujah 04, we come back, and then we get ready for Fallujah 06. Okay. Right on. Um, and you were still with 3-5? I'm still with 3-5. Still India company? Uh, so I got moved to H&S company, so I'm now, I got... Uh, Moved to uh, the PSD, the Personal Security Attachment for the Battalion Commander and the Sergeant Major. Okay. Uh, so now Lieutenant Jensen, the guy who got fragged my uh, second tour in 04, now he is the uh, platoon commander for, for Jump. They call it Jump Platoon. Yeah. Some call it Junk, but yeah, Jump Platoon. <laughs> which, uh, so I, I go there as a, so he, so, Lieutenant Jensen at the time tells me that he kind of had like a like a number one draft pick, yeah. And so he picks me to be a saw gunner. I was a lance corporal, so I get there and then um, I pick up corporal. And but it's like a, a ragtag, like you know, a bunch of guys from different companies that that are ba basically your throwaways. Like it's not, it's nobody good really. Yeah. So a bunch of guys get outcast for pretty much from their platoon their companies and they get thrown for the to the psd so now we got to form up and become a, a psd a personal security attachment so it was led by lieutenant jensen and then uh sergeant plower who was a sniper and who became a uh, staff sergeant plower and then me i'm corporal jimmy i'm the i'm next then a bunch of guys from like com motor t uh, dat, well, data, data's calm. And then grunts from all the companies. And then we uh, deploy again in 06 to Fallujah. Hold on. Just, just give me a sec. I should put it at the wrong spot. Cool. So you deploy again in 06. Um, and you were saying that this deployment. And you went back to Fallujah, right? Back to Fallujah. And Fallujah is still, is still hot. Yep. And you're saying that this deployment was worse than your first deployment to Fallujah? To me, yeah. To me, yeah. It, it hurt me a lot more. It was, was, uh, was it, did you lose more friends in this yeah. deployment? Yeah. Okay. Did, were you ever injured? Nope. No? I got hit by a couple of IEDs, but like nothing. Yeah. So the, the first deployment to Fallujah, it lasted like 
for like two months out there or that was something? like seven seven eight months yeah in fallujah yeah in fallujah okay all right oh because carlos is he was there for like two months yeah it ended early for him okay also oh, so you we guys stayed, stayed back, in yeah. and we had like another another go out fallujah like some more clearing for like another month and then we kind of like after that we took the city let people back in and started to like rebuild okay but yeah no, there was no more uh really no more firefights after that so like the 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 hottest part of that deployment was like was it like would you say like the first month or two oh uh, yeah november november was uh, a lot pretty hot and then we we started clearing again like in december but after that yeah, it was it, was it kind of like yeah you guys kind of just took over yeah and then and i so then the second pl deployment to uh fallujah um so like that first one you guys the united states or the marines or army or whatever took over the whole city yeah we surround the city and then okay and then the second deployment well if you guys already took over the city what what was like the um, did they lose territory or like what was it was that? like a re like rebuilding like let them you know get back to the country let them govern themselves so it wasn't you know it wasn't a full-on like attack what, was it more just like ieds and stuff like that or for me it was all ieds okay i didn't fire a single round my third tour mm. that's like the worst part okay i so that's what made it your the hardest yeah because there was really no Nobody enemy to shoot. Yeah, exactly. It was just IDs. Okay, and then the vehicles they still weren't like equipped at that time, right? No, yeah. So by this time we had like up armor, everything was up armor. We had like you know the most high tech stuff at the time, the best armor. We had the, the the little antenna that like supposed to block signals so they can't detonate. Yeah. So we thought, um, but yeah, at the time, yeah. So we had we felt safe. Somewhat in our vehicles. Yeah. So, did you get hit personally with IEDs? Uh, I hit I hit three IEDs. I got well, I got hit by like three IEDs. Okay. Personally. And you guys had any um, killed in action in those IEDs? Uh, the three I got hit personally, no. Okay. My vehicle, no. So, the my first one was the like the initial rip, the right seat, left seat. So the so the relieving unit takes us, you know. He's gonna show us around. So it was like leaders recon. So it was like the platoon commander, the platoon sergeant, and me. So I'm telling Charlie, I'm the last vehicle. And we go out and we're learning the AO. And then on the way back, my vehicle got hit by an AD. Yeah. Boom! We get hit. And then the dark, the dark humor like comes over, like everyone's laughing, right? I'm not laughing. Everyone's laughing, like, dude, that was a small one, right? And I was just like, Okay. Yeah. You know, but that was my first day. First day out on mission. I was mm. like, damn, this, this can't be a good sign. Yeah. Then we probably hit. So, this is. So, we're the PSD. We're the colonel's bodyguard, right? The colonel and the sergeant major. We probably hit like nine more IEDs, 10 more IEDs. Like, we hit a bunch of IEDs. Just the overall, the whole convoy. The convoy. Our four, four vehicle convoy. Oh, wow. So jump one, jump two, jump three, jump four, four vehicles. The yeah, lead vehicle has heart major. Second vehicle was the medevac. Third vehicle was the, the, the BC. And then I was telling Charlie, fourth vehicle, the vehicle commander. That, like in one mission or just like the overall? Convoy, our convoy. So every, every, how we rolled out, that's how we rolled out, those four vehicles. So we just went to FOB, FOB to FOB. You know, just okay. the colonel had a meeting. Who was going to meet whatever, you know, go to Camp Fallujah. We'd go, we'd take them. So throughout the deployment, that four vehicle four vehicles, combo yeah, got hit nine times. Uh, before we lost, like, or ten times before we lost somebody. Okay. So we got, like, to the point where, like, man, these IEDs ain't going to hurt us. You know, like, we, we became victims of our own success. Like, we were hit by IEDs, but we felt safe. Like, we felt like, ah, you know, the, yeah. the armor's working, how they're planning them. Like, it's not, it's not doing any damage. And then one day we were going to go, we went to TQ, we went to, um, dang it. It was a little base outside the, uh, TQ that we were going to take over. And um, we went to go do some like recon there. <clears throat> and instead of taking like the safe way, the colonel opted to go down, like I want to say it's Route Michigan, MSR Michigan. He wanted to like uh, 
<clears throat> have a show of force, a show of presence down. I'm pretty sure it was MSR mission. It was like that was the main route. That joint TQ to to the mech. Um, we were playing hacky sack, and I still have the hacky sack. So we're playing hacky sack, and um, Staff Sergeant Plyer comes out. And he's like, that, that was his thing. He said, jump, you know, load up. We all get in our vehicles. And it was weird because we always move forward. Our convoy, like, never turned around. Like, it was, you know, like, it's hard to, like, we always set up, like, if we were going to, if we are, like, if we went somewhere, we, the way our vehicle's position mm -hmm. was to, like, to leave. Yeah, just so to we'd always, push yeah, out. So, yeah. yeah, push forward. So, for whatever reason, we stopped, but our vehicles didn't line up that way that day. So, we had to make a U turn. So, we make a, make a U turn. And I remember, so Cheeks is the machine gunner or the turret gunner for Jump One. And then I'm telling Charlie. So, they make the U turn, and he's just like, looked at me and I look at him but it was like I just had like a weird feeling uh -huh. like the vibe was off like this this wasn't right so he hits the MSR so TQ like we could have just went over to TQ but there's like an on wrap here so we hit the MSR so now we're going down the MSR <clears throat> and then the ID goes off and I kid you not, I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, another idea. Like, honestly, we laughed about it. Yeah. Me and the driver, like, ah, another idea. And then it was like, man, there's no, like, radio chatter. Like, no one's laughing, cracking jokes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's, you know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So, Staff Sergeant Plyer, the platoon sergeant, he, he gets over, get Doc up here now. Mm. What the guys are like, what the fuck? Me and uh, Rivera. <clears throat> like, this, this is weird. So I told me, like, creep up. Like, let's, let's see what's going on. So then I'm like, dude, I'm going to run out, dude. I'm going to go check out. What's, like, this is weird. So I run to the front of the column. And I see Doc treating, like, all jump one. Lieutenant Jensen, Sorry Major Kovchek, Lande, Cheeks. I'm like, dude, what's going on? And I see Cheeks, like, uh, Cheeks is uh, Benito Ramirez. I call him Cheeks from Texas, from Brownsville, Texas. And he's just like motionless, right? But I, I thought I was playing around. I'm like, Cheeks, I started like, I fucking grab him like cheeks i'm fucking around he didn't move and i see like doc just work on everybody else like doc what the fuck's up with cheeks man like work on cheeks and he just like looked at me he's like he's gone and he's like treating everybody else i was like what the fuck you mean he's gone so i grab cheeks and i pull him out I'm, like i'm like cheeks i'm fucking and, like i'm gonna stop him boom <clears throat> and i'm trying to give him cpr i'm like cheeks cheeks like what the fuck cheeks he's got nothing like he's got no marks nothing he doesn't look bad just, there's no life in them. So I'm trying all I can to fucking <clears throat> put life back in them. And there was nothing. So me and somebody else carry cheeks to, to jump four back to my vehicle. And I don't know how Kennedy, like, Kennedy now, this other guy, he, he's, a, he's in the turret. <clears throat> so we put him in the vehicle. He's like, what's up with Cheeks? And I was like, he's gone, man. And he just like, just, just turned white. I'm like this, just, just take care of him, man. And I run back to jump one. Sorry, Major's like, he can't even talk. He's like, well, uh, he's like, uh, uh, he just, sorry, Major's fucked up. I grab him. I'm like, sorry, Major, fucking get it together. But no, he's fucked up. He just like can't. He was like, uh, uh. So then Doc's working on everybody else. <clears throat> we met up back everybody. And then so so Cheeks is gone. He passed. Lande's fucked up for life. Sorry, Major lost his eye. Mm. Lieutenant Jensen, um, he recovered. 
Nothing really major to him. Second Purple Heart, and I also was there for that too, the, the first one. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, so we just uh, paid our respects. We had like a little, uh, little funeral, and uh, we continued mission. We went out. So now, Moro, he was from India Company, he's like, ain't no one going to man that gun but me. I want that 50. I want jump one. So like he volunteers to take jump one. <clears throat> right, that was, his, that was his fellow machine gunner. But Cheeks was the, like the class clown. He made the platoon laugh. Just, just a heart of gold, just, just a sweetheart, mm -hmm. man. just a beautiful human being. Gone. So, <clears throat> so now we lost our platoon commander, our sergeant major. Landay's the driver. He's screwed for life. Major brain damage. Mm. I saw him in the hospitals. Oof. And uh, so we go out for like a couple more weeks. We're doing missions. Everything's going pretty good. Um, but we like, we want to go home. Like, we're just like, dude, we're, we're tired of this. Yeah. And, um, we went to go visit India company. We go visit India company. I see a couple of the boys. So I run out cause it's India company. I go say hi to a couple guys and we get back in our vehicles. Now we're going back down, um, <clears throat> the MSR. And then we hit the biggest ID we have uh, ever encountered in country. It it flipped the Humvee. Humvee flips. <clears throat> so Staff Sergeant Plower, he was a sniper, but he always wore his Kevlar kind of. He kind of wear his Kevlar like kind of uh -huh. up. Yeah, yeah kind of like uh, that's what he did. <clears throat> so what I think happened is that. I think he headbutted the Blue Force tracker. So the you know, explosion happens. I think he headbutts the Blue Force tracker. And he gets ejected. He gets ejected 20 yards from the Humvee. The Humvee lands <clears throat> on top of the turret. His body gets ejected. I don't really that I don't realize it, realize it at the time, but I know I'm senior like I, I, I quickly find out I'm the senior man. <clears throat> so I run up to Staff Sergeant Plower and me and Doc get to the same time. And you should never see a human being the way I saw him. And I, I try not to remember like I'm pretty good about blocking it out, like I'm telling the story, but like I'm not seeing him. But when I tell you I the way I saw him, like you don't ever want to see somebody like that. Me and Doc looked at each other. We just shook our head. And then we got the stretcher. We put him on the stretcher. And we got him on uh, jump two, which was a high back, to get him out of there. Well, Doc manages him up best he could. <clears throat> so, doc, so jump two in another vehicle, boom, they head over to, to TQ for the medevac. Then, um, so I'm like, shit, I'm senior man. I'm trying to get accountability. So I, uh, you know, started like, I, oh, I go to jump one, the vehicle. Because I saw our acting Sergeant Major, which was first Sergeant Boyer. He was acting Sergeant Major. And Bowie, uh, sorry, uh, Swan Dive, Swanson, call him Swan Dive. I saw them run out. I obviously know what's happening to Staff Sergeant Plower. But I haven't seen Morrow yet. Morrow was the turret gunner. <clears throat> so when I get to the Humvee, I see a boot. Through the turret. And I was like, oh shit, it's moral. It wasn't like a boot, it was like a boot with the cami pant, like I saw. Yeah. I knew he was under the Humvee. So we had an OP around the corner, so I started popping pyro. Boom, 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 boom. I get everybody, hey, let's try to fucking lift the Humvee. Dude, we did fucking budget. So the Humvee comes with a winch. Luckily, the, the Humvee had a winch. And it was uh, Greenwood and Solario from India Company. 
So the way we rendered, like, so my civilian job, I'm a union iron worker. I'm a qualified rigger. Like, I'm good at rigging stuff. The way we ran that winch, we weren't trained on it, but we got so lucky that the way the winch got ran and the hook rendered on the, <clears throat> on the, <clears throat> on the winch, that when it pulled up, so it started to come up, but I'm lucky like the winch didn't, if it was rendered the other way, it could have ran and it could have crushed me. So the winch comes up, so the winch starts doing its thing. The Humvee comes up about a foot. Moro's about 6'3", like 240, being nice. He's a big ass dude. So I crawl underneath the Humvee. He had a, uh, he had a nine mil, so he had like a, the belt, mm -hmm. like, a, like a gun belt. <clears throat> and I, I get the colonel, so the BC's there with me. He's like, be careful. And I just fucking crawled under. I remember the Humvee just like comes up about a foot. Just enough for me to get in there. Mm. And I just pull him out. <clears throat> pull him out, the Humvee just go back down. <clears throat> like, Corman up, Corman up, Corman up. This beautiful human being, I don't even know where he's at, where he's from, how he was there. This Corman from I don't even know what company just shows up. Opens up his flak jacket and goes to work. And he just going to work on him. I don't even know. I, I don't think I've ever seen this kid before. I know he's in our battalion. And he's going to work. And he gets a pulse. Mm. I got a pulse. I got a pulse. Then the medevac comes. And we get Moro out of there. So then Moro, we get him to, damn, there was an OP on top of a hill. And um, the Chinooks come in. Me and uh, the beast, Loeras, we carried him to the, to the Chinook. Oh, no, might have been. I mean, so we carried, him, we carried him to the Chinooks. The Chinooks take off to TQ, and they start working on him. So then we're like, fuck, dude. We had, like, no motivation. We're all hurt. Like, we just lost Cheeks. Now Moro. That's when Plower is fucked up. Oh, we don't, we don't know the... Severity of all their wounds, but I mean, it wasn't good. So Staff Sergeant Plower passed. <clears throat> they got Moro, I think, to Germany. So he made it out of Iraq, and then I think he passed in Germany. Mm. And they were gone. I didn't fire a single round. I didn't shoot nobody. That was it. And that was my third deployment. Yeah. We were after that. We were combat ineffective. Our platoon couldn't go out anymore. Yeah. Our PSD was. We would get like one vehicle and take the colonel out with like another company or whoever was going out. We didn't have enough. We didn't have enough Marines. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, tough times. Then um. So that was that towards like the end of the. Deployment? Yeah, it was towards the end. Okay. And then, uh, and 3 2 came to relieve us. And we started to rip with them. So it was, we had their vehicles, their guys, and it was just like leaders, like our few people that rip with them. And, uh, I actually extended in country because I was like, I was coming up short. I would have I been out late 06. And uh, Sergeant Major asked me to, to extend because I didn't, re I didn't want to re-enlist. I, I think I would have been a career Marine until when, once Cheeks got hurt or once Cheeks passed, I was like, I'm not staying in. Yeah. That was like the biggest switch for me was seeing him pass, and I'm like, there's no way I'm staying in. And um, Sergeant Major like called me into his office right after Cheeks passed. And uh, there was a 54K bonus for, for a corporal. I was like, no, sorry, Major. I'm not staying in. Yeah. And he was like, are you kidding me? He was like, you were made for that. I'm like, I thought it was too, sorry, Major. Like, I, I had dreams of doing 20. Like, there was no way I wasn't going to do 20. And um, I said, no. And he's like, well, you're coming up short. You know, extend. If you extend when we get back when we get back to the states, I'll take care of you. 
I said, I'll do that, Sergeant Major. And then Moro passed, Staff Sergeant Plara passed. But I had already extended. <clears throat> but we made it back, the, the, you know, the couple of us that made it back. Because we had uh, three KIA, and I don't know how many wounded. And we were a small little ass platoon, like under 20 guys. Mm. So we had a, we, I think we took it the worst out of the whole battalion was the PSD. How many uh, wounded did you guys have? One, uh, I want to say like five. Five wounded and three K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so almost half the platoon. Almost half the platoon, yeah. Went down. Oh, um, so you get out in 2007? Yeah, so I get back, and then I'm like uh, the uh, driver for the colonel and the, the new colonel and Sergeant Major. I just drive them around to the ranges, like wherever they're going to go. Yeah. <clears throat> so if they go to, if they go to 20, if we had a company of 29 Palms, I'd take them to 29 Palms. If they had a company in Yuma, I'd take them to Yuma. Wherever they needed to go, I just yeah. drove them in a Gov. That was pretty cool. I didn't have to really do nothing. Yeah. And then I got out January 7th, 2007. Yeah. And then you say you did IR for three years? I did the IR. Um, I got promoted in the IR. What unit were you with in the IR? Uh, I don't think I was assigned to a unit. I, I think I... Uh, oh, you were just chilling. You didn't check into no I mustered a, I mustered to Seal Beach. Okay, yeah. So I go to Seal Beach. And... Um, I was, yeah, I was never thought nothing of it. Uh, the economy was good. Um... I did this program called Helmets to Hard Hats. That's how I got into the union, uh, to mm -hmm. the iron workers. I started working iron in October 2007. And the economy was good. I was working. And things were looking good. And then, like, probably, like, in, 2008 was good, too. And then 2009 is, like, when the economy, like, really, for me, was bad. And I, was, I wasn't working much. I just had my son. And I was struggling. Yeah. Uh, so I was hurting. So I thought, like, what's the only thing I can do? What's the only thing I know how to do? I'm going to go back to the Marines. So <clears throat> I tried getting back in the Marines in 2010. And I couldn't because of my tattoos. Mm. I got sleeves. And yeah, they, they, around that time, they got rid yeah, of the... Uh, yeah, super strict. Yeah. So I couldn't get back in. And I was like, dude, F it. I'm going to join the Army. Yeah. So I hit up the Army recruiter. Prior service. He's like, what's your RE code? So like, however you get out. So and I got an honorable RE code 1, which is like the good one, like what you need. All right, let's put you in. <clears throat> so I uh, started going to, started doing the process. And the station commander, he was an E7. He takes me out back, and he was going to break the news. To, like, he could tell, like, he, he wanted to tell me something. Like, it was serious. So he takes me out back. <clears throat> he lights up a cigarette. He's like, you smoke? I was like, no. I was like, but I'll take one. All right. So I kind of knew, like, you know, when someone, like, offers you a smoke, it's never a good sign. <clears throat> so I light my cigarette, started smoking. He's like, yeah. He goes, you know, right now we're not really taking prior service. I was like, oh, really? I was like, oh, shit. you know, kind of in my head. I was like, dude, I got a kid to feed. Like, yeah, I'm kind of down and out. Like, things ain't looking good for me. He goes, the only way we're letting prior service in is if they have a V device. And I was like, Phew. I was like, well, I got two V devices. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> He goes, oh, he's like, he kind of like changed his tone. He goes, like, are you, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. He's like, he goes, bring your awards in. He's like, yeah, yeah, we'll get you in. I was like, oh, all right. So I brought my awards in. And, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an outsider. I'm, I, you know, I don't know what he knows, what he sees. I brought my awards in. He's like, oh, yeah. So he puts it in, plugs it in, whatever he does, what he does. 
So when I, I go to maps and I'm, I'm still trying to join, like in my head, I was like, I'm going to go, I want to go active duty. I'm going to go to maps. I'm going to go on the floor. Yeah. I'm going to tell I want active duty. So I go to maps and do all that. I'm, trying, I'm telling them I want active duty. I'm like, nah, you, you can't do active duty. Like you can't, you got to, I was, uh, I got a child out of wedlock. I'm not married. So I can't go active duty. Mm. I didn't know that. Like I really didn't know the business rules. So the math sergeant is like, <clears throat> We'll let you do it. She goes, if you want, you can do a try one contract, which is a one year enlistment. I was like, okay, I was like, that sounds good. Like I was like, yeah, and, I, and I'll, you know, I'll do, you know, do whatever it takes. You know, I'll work my way up, whatever. And I'll, I'll, I'll go out to duty. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sure. So I did a try one contract, which is a one year enlistment to the 311th ESC out of Santa Monica, which is a one star command. So it's like a, there's a general there, there's a one star general there. You know, I didn't know. I just wanted my foot in the door. So I get in. I joined uh, June 2010. It was the day the uh, United States played Algeria in the World Cup. Because when mm -hmm. Landon Donovan scored the goal, we were, I was there and we watched it. And it was pretty cool. So then I check into my unit. And it's like, talk about culture shock. My yeah. reserve at a one-star command was like, what the heck is Nasty this? Nasty as fuck? Yeah. Nasty, <laughs> but it's like different, you know, <clears throat> because you're a, you're a citizen soldier. So some of these guys are making way more money on the civilian side. That's when you learn, like, yeah, that waking they're making money, but they get their choose to do on their weekend. You know, lose, they're gonna lose one weekend a month mm -hmm. to go serve their country. Yeah. So that's kind of, but yes, nasty, like different, like it's, it's it was a rude awakening. So the good thing I had a three year break in the IR because if not, I think I would have like just lost Fuck my it. mind. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first, so my first formation, we fall in, and it's like master sergeants to my left. E fours to my right, and I'm like, dude, like, what, there's no squad integrity. Like, what the heck is going on here? Like, we're just, yeah, all mixed in together. Uh -huh. Like, you know, it should be like by rank. Yeah, like, what all the that heck shit. is going on? Yeah, dude? yeah. yeah. So I'm like confused. Then I started to learn like the ways of the of the Army Reserve, and uh, so did that. Uh, so did a couple drill weekends. Did like a drill weekend for like a, a year or two. And then, uh, but I'm still struggling. Like, I'm still, like, trying to find work. And so then my unit deployed to Afghanistan, but I didn't have a secret clearance at the time. Mm. So I couldn't deploy. Mm. And they asked me to, if I want to do, like, remain behind element. So, like, every, every reserve unit in every branch has full-time staff at that, at, that, uh, at that unit, at that reserve unit. Or uh, National Guard unit. So meaning like if the unit is like in small town USA mm. and that unit is like 40 people, there's someone there Monday through Friday to do like answer the phone, like prepare the training schedule. Yeah. So all across the nation that this happens. Like, like I and I stuff kind of? Kind of, exactly. But yeah. everywhere. Yeah. In every, every unit mm. <clears throat> in, the, in the reserves. Every branch. So the Army has what's called Active Guard Reserve. So they're like reservists on active duty. So this is full, they, it's like the, the most skate job you can have because they're full-time staff mm -hmm. or they're on active duty, but they, they're not doing anything really. Yeah. Except for that one week in a month. And they, even then they don't do anything because they have to like make sure that the, the reservists do the work. Yeah. I was in the reserve. So okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. yeah. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. So now they asked me to, do, to be reserve, uh, remain behind element. But then they're like, okay, you got to do... So, you know, so, like, you have to do 30-day, you need 30-day orders to make BH. Yeah. So, they can put you on, like, seven-day orders, five, whatever it is. If it's under 30 days, you don't get BH. Yeah. They always cut it off at, like, 29. 29, so 29 <laughs> yeah. They always put you on 29. So, the shadiest thing that one guy did to me, I'll never forget this, dude. This was the most shady. Fourth uh, of July landed on a Wednesday. Yeah. So, he put me on 2-day orders Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday was... Fourth of July, yeah. So no orders, and then Thursday, Friday was another set of orders, and I'm like, dude, he could put me on straight five day orders because you, you, you know, they're not gonna put you on weekends. But I, I was trying to play the game and get my orders. So I did that. Finally, I got, uh, I think I got sixty day orders. So I got my sixty day orders, and then ninety day orders, and then I got my one twenty orders, and then I got my one year. Um, it's it's either called ADOS or COIDOS. So I did a year. So that pretty much fed my family for like two years. So I got I did two years in Santa okay. Monica of doing that. 
I had a high PT score, so it's the one star command, so they get airborne slots. So they got some airborne slots, and luckily the lieutenant colonel who I worked for was my boy. Yeah. So he got the one slot. He goes, hey, you want to go to airborne school? I'm like, Psh, are you kidding me? Yeah. So he sent me, so he got me the slot for airborne school. So I went to airborne school, and then, um, so I went to airborne school, came back, probably about 2013, and my contract's about to end. So now I got airborne school, I got a secret clearance, and I'm about to get out. So I go back to the Marine recruiters again, 2013. And I go in, like, my awards, jump school, yeah. secret clearance, try to get back in. Um, and they're like, oh, no. I'm like, well, so I sit down. The first thing they ask me, like, do you have any tattoos? I'm like, yeah, I got, like, two. And he's like, where? I'm like, one, two? Yeah. He goes, man, they're not going to let you back in. I was like, all right, you know, you know, I thought I'd try. So then I re I reenlisted back in the army, and in 2015 I deployed to Ali Al Salim, the air base, so the Air Force base, with my uh, unit. So I I got a new unit, the 975 MCT, which is a movement control team. So basically cargo. So our job was to package all the cargo and put it on the Air Force airplane. So palletize it, make it neat, mm. make it airworthy. Well, that deployment, I learned a lot because I always thought to, I always thought pogues were like the nastiest human beings. Yeah. I thought they shouldn't be in the military. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so my unit, believe me, half of them could barely pass a PT test. Yeah. Half of them could barely shoot, but they had hearts of gold. Yeah. They gave up their weekends, one weekend a month, to go serve their country, mm -hmm. and they wanted to play their part. So now we get to Kuwait, or Ali Al Salim, which is in Kuwait. We get there, and we relieve this unit. And this unit had cargo. We're talking about cargo that had been there for months. And this is when I saw, when I changed my mentality about like a warrior mentality. Like it doesn't matter your MOS, like you can be a warrior and that mentality. Mm. If you have the warrior mentality, no matter your MOS, dude, you can be a great, you know, <clears throat> a great soldier. So. We started moving out cargo like it hadn't been shipped out before. And, and now we're getting like accolades. People are coming like, what are you guys doing? And I learned like reservists have different skill sets. Like, you know, you have your civilian job and then you have your, mm -hmm. your MOS. But we bring more to the table. Again, we're not going to pass a PT test. Like, we'll pass it. Like, we'll get by. Yeah. But we're smarter or we're good at doing other things because we have dual hats. Like, or yeah, three hats. Or, you know, sure. everyone's, they have a civilian life. So we that deployment was badass because we kicked we kicked butt. And then I was uh for my um civilian job, I was good at driving a forklift. Mm -hmm. So as funny as that sounds, like I was like able to like do stuff with cargo. Like they would uh they would uh put in uh orders to KBR to get the crane mm -hmm. to come in and do like something like lame and I'm like, I can do that with a forklift. They're like, really how? And I was like, so I'd get the forklift and I show them how to do this, like I show them how to rig. I would go to the Air Force, the Air Force had a heist a thirty K heister, which is like a capable uh Picking up 30 tons. Mm -hmm. I would get that forklift and I would move like Hesco barriers or whatever. Yeah. And I would move them and like, man, how'd you do that? I'm like, man, it's not me, it's the machine, but like I have the know-how. Yeah. So that was cool. That was really cool to see like the warfighter capable in any situation, like in the, any MOS. Like if he's willing to fight for his country, like he's willing to make it happen. Yeah. Which was really cool, like to see that. Yeah. And it, it, it changed my mentality because it's like again, it's like I'm so used to <clears throat> Be an infantry, like yeah. You know, if you're not the one kicking in the doors, you're not the one fighting the enemy. Like yeah, are you really in the military? But like yeah, you play your part. Like we're not all designed to mm -hmm. to do that. Well, that was cool. So that changed my heart. Um, great deployment. I got promoted to staff sergeant. Came home, bought a house, and uh, went back to iron work. And I was working on the the Gerald Desmond Bridge over there in uh, Long Beach, San Pedro. Did that, and I put in a packet for uh, AGR to be, uh, so to become a reservist on active duty. And I got picked up, and I got recruiting duty. And I was like, I shouldn't, uh, a uh, not a not a good decision. Ended up working out well for me, so I was a recruiter for like three years, and then um, in the army, in the, in the army. And so then, was it like active duty? Yeah, so I'm considered active duty as a recruiter, oh. and then. Um, Got medically retired. 
September last year, 2023. Yeah, I could relate to um, in the reserve how there's just different dudes with different skill sets. So there's dudes in my platoon that were like LAPD yeah. or sheriffs or paramedics, EMT, construction workers, oil riggers, yeah. all of this fucking shit. And then like we were motor T. And I was a mechanic, but most of it, you know, was motor T. And then we would just support, you know, Alpha Company and this, that, and the other. And we will always just do, like, a kick-ass job because we just had all these different skills and we just put it all together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, freaking. Um, so let's move on to, like, um, um, I guess, like, mental health or so, like, dudes that you've, have you served with um have you experienced a lot of friends that like commit suicide or develop like drug <laughs> habits or passed away from from yeah. the things from the trauma they've experienced while serving all the above yeah so I'm, i think i went to three funerals in the last two years i kind of went to a fourth funeral like a month and a half ago i chose not to it was just uh Mental health is, so I, I got kind of lucky the way I got out because I went to uh, Intrepid Spirit at Camp Pendleton. So I got admitted there and um, had, you know, TBI, obviously from the IEDs. And I went to a trauma therapy. And that was cool. I was I was in therapy with um, Sergeant Roundtree, or sorry, sorry, Sergeant Tree. He was at Abbey Gate and he was in the blast. And um, so me and him bonded a lot because uh, he had like a survivor's guilt and he was just, he was really hard on himself. Like he was really hard on himself that he survived. He was there. He felt like he could have done more. And I remember I just broke down. Like I didn't, I just, I, I told him like, hey man, like um, I can relate to you a lot. Like I feel your pain, but I feel like you're being way too hard on yourself. Like. You honored your name, your family, your platoon, your company, your unit. Like you, you brought great honor out to what you did. Like there's nothing you need to be sad about. And then like I broke down because I felt like I was talking to myself. Like I felt, you know, I mean, like I, yeah. I but it, it was like it, it caught me by surprise. So I broke down hard. Then like me and him hugged it out right there in therapy, which was cool. And um, I feel like the Marine Corps could have done a better job on the, like how we got out, like my generation. Like there was there, there was more that should have been done for us because I felt like we just got back and we're like just let us out. Like we you know like we were rushed out. We rushed out the like the door. I did two fourteen and I'm gone. So I felt like <clears throat> all the trauma that I had, you know, for all the years that I got to. I got to finally vent. I got to finally release that, which was good for me. You know, so many years after the fact, but it, you know, it happened. It happened for me, and I think too, a, a big part is that it happened for me at Camp Pendleton. Yeah. Like even though I'm in, the, I was at the army at the time in army uniform, I was around Marines, and I got like there was gunnies, and like they're like appreciating my stories, hearing my stories. I mean, I was on the yellow footprints before them. So, like, there's just something about being around them, like, yeah. made it different. And I me like, release that stress and, like, just feel like I was getting out, like, I was finally getting out right. Like, I let all that out. And now, I don't have the weight of the uniform, like, like, I'm kind of, like, it's water under the bridge. Like, I don't, what I like to say is, like, for me, war was very black and white. Like, I don't feel bad about anything I did. I don't think about, I try not to think about the past. I try to move forward. I want to raise my son. But important to me is, like, my outlets, my working out, my Muay Thai, like, competing, my Friday, Friday night soccer league, my Sunday baseball league. Like, I need that. Like, that's, yeah. that's most of my outlets. I also do feel like I need to check in with my boys. Like, I need the... Um, can't, it's, it's not with like just anybody. It's just it's it's like with them that serve with me. Unless we did something together, like it's kind of it's kind of hard to like bond. Yeah, I mean you have common ground, like someone who served, and like okay, you know. But still, it's like the ones that really know you, like to check in with them. 
like uh, you need that. And and at this stage of the game, it, like again, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not young. I'm 41. Like I know my body. I know my I know what makes me tick. Like I need to work out. I need to go for runs. Yeah. I need that. I need that fresh air. I need to be mm. in the sun. I mean everything now, like everything, like stretching, good food, good water, like all that plays a part. Like uh, sure. putting good in helps a lot. Like yeah. whatever you consume, whether For you sure. watch bad things, mm -hmm. read bad things, like mm -hmm. read good, like do stuff. Yeah, good. people don't really realize that, but like that that goes like a long way. Yeah, it does. You know, find your escape, find your outlet, find what makes you tick, find what makes you happy, though. Yeah. It could be like it could be super simple. It could be fishing. It could be cooking. Um, I think it's I think it's good to find like more than one discipline because um, some days I don't feel like running. Some days I feel like mountain bike riding. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe this day I want to go swimming. Some days like uh, just a long drive with the radio off and just zone out. Like yeah. sometimes like, uh, I I I could get depressed. So like I could like if I don't have like a. <clears throat> I think good days like stacking together make things easier like if i go three days with eating bad not working out like it makes the next day the hard like harder but if yeah. i continue to like do good mm. it's easier it's easier to be happy for, you know yeah find positive uh, i'm lucky to be above ground i really am truly am and like i don't want to me i bring honor to my friends living the best life that they don't get to live anymore so i don't want to do them injustice by cutting that life short you know, I, I got friends that never be fathers. Yeah, and that you know it's heartbreaking. It's like one of the greatest joys in life is to for sure to see your your son grow up. You want him to be a better version of you. Mm -hmm. You want them to have better than you did. Teach, mentor, guide them. Have a better life than you. Like you know, yeah. you want you know like a better yeah. version of you. Yep. So I bring I I honor them by living that life for them, and I don't want to cut it short. So, and I know people choose to leave early, check out early, and they had their demons and their battles, and, like, I don't hold it against them. Like, they felt like it was better. Like, to me, that's the sad part is, like, you feel like that they felt that they were better off not being here. Yeah. And no matter what you post or no matter what you say, or, like, you know, the door is always open. It's like, if you're not actively seeing what your friend's doing, like, it's not, you really don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, and I, I feel like if somebody decides to, you know, take their own life, like, there's really nothing you can do about it. Like, they kind of made up their mind. Yeah, that's how I see it, too. Yeah, like, that was... You're not going to stop them. Yeah, and it's super sad. I had a client that committed suicide. I gave him his last haircut. Like, I never saw it coming, you know, and um, that was really tough. But, like, I just, somebody's going to do it. They're just going to do it. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Where? I think we could, I think we could wrap it up with that. Huh? Yeah, I appreciate you coming through, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, no worries. Yeah.